Good afternoon. Good evening, guys. How are you? As always, let me know if you hear me well, if you see me well. How are you guys? Let me see. Is the microphone on? Yes, it is on. Very good. Uh, we are in Italy, in Rome, actually. And I see Paul, I see Manuel, I see William, I see Adam, Helldriver. Welcome back, everybody, guys. Good. Ready to check, guys? 5x5, five 3x5. Five, five. How do you read me? j -Dog, welcome back. Good, yeah, we are in Rome. And 5x5, <laughs> five five. thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, there was an air traffic event here, even though there is an Airbus A320 of Lufthansa in the background. There was an air traffic event going on from Rome to Beirut today. But what I miscalculated is that the event started in Rome and everybody departed already. And also air traffic control is gone now. That means at the moment, no air traffic control here in Rome. Maybe once we start up and uh, get our aircraft prepared, um, that will change. But for now, no air traffic control here in Rome. But in Salzburg and especially also in Zurich, there should definitely be air traffic control. So let me start the boarding process here for our flight. I come through, we're ready to get going now. So as soon as you're ready, you can open the doors and start letting the passengers on board. Thank you. And I need to do a test with you guys. Before the stream, I started to change. Uh, no <laughs> Adam, the route is updated this time. Uh, before I started the stream, I tried to tweak the sound settings here a bit because I found last time when I played the safety announcement, you heard it double. There was a slight echo in the safety announcement. So I tried to optimize that. But now I'm not sure if you hear the notifications for some, for instance, when somebody is subscribing or donating or whatever. So let me just repeat um, a message of a subscription here. Um, and you guys let me know if you heard that sound. So three, two, one. Let me know if you heard the sound or if you just saw the message in the, in the chat, please. Good. And besides that, we're ready to go. Interesting flight uh, from Rome to Salzburg along the Alps and then from Salzburg to Zurich and especially in Salzburg and also in Zurich there should be a traffic control and a lot of traffic actually at the moment there so uh, yeah that should get interesting we are flying the beautiful Airbus A320 of Austrian Airlines again um, the fly by wire mod the newest version some new enhancements um, so should get interesting no sound okay so then my friends I need to um activate might be that you hear if we play the safety announcement later might be that you hear the slight echo again um hope that's not so bad but i activated the sound of the notifications again i need to tweak that afterwards but thank you manuel good so let's jump into the flight deck and um what i did is i already connected the external power but let's do that once again let me reduce the sound of the music here a little. Now let's activate the... So you see external power is connected. Here it is. And that's also one of the tweaks they changed. The avail was always in green, but when you press it, it's now in blue. So that used to be in white before, if I remember correctly. So they are tweaking a lot. Um, and some sometimes it's only minor things, but sometimes also bigger things. Like last time they introduced this electronic flight back here. So yeah, external power is on. And normally we should have activated the batteries first. Voltage is fine, 25.4 on both sides. So that's okay. And let's start the alignment of the ADIRS first. So that our navigation system is working properly. And now let's go from top down and then from left to right. So first we can test the evacuation command again. It's working. GPWS, of course, we still see the fault for terrain and system here because the ADRS alignment is not yet completed. The flight controls are all activated. That's fine. We switch on the crew oxygen supply. Passenger oxygen supply is on. And we can also test the emergency signal here. working three times the chime. Now, before we start the APU, let's run the fire test. 
APU fire test is working for engine one as well and for engine two as well and yeah you remember in one of my last streams from Warsaw to I can't even remember where we flew um, I remember it was an A321 but where did we want to fly I think somewhere in Germany and then we had to <laughs> we had a bird strike and yeah here you have the the fire push button and that basically disconnects the fuel and hydraulic lines and everything from the engine if you press that and the agent one and agent two are discharged bottles inside the engine with uh, yeah with a fluid that's then basically trying to distinguish the fire so that's that's basically how the fire system works um fuel pumps we can already switch to on even though we still have to refuel so normally we would do it afterwards but just to prevent me from forgetting it again. Now everything else here, you remember in the Airbus A320 or in Airbus aircrafts in general, they have this no light policy. So as long as no light is on, that's a good sign. And yellow lines, lights like here or amber lights are of course a bad signal, like here fault. White lines, lights mean something is still switched off and blue is only for your information. So here, this is not rather negative nor positive this just is that external power is connected so blue means it's on it's the same for NTIs for instance so if we switch that on here for the pro peat for instance it's also in blue good switch on the navigation and logo lights and the emergency exit lights we set to arm and everything else looks fine that means let's start the APU master switch on and start and also here we see these lights are blue. Some background lights for our overhead panel. There was in Warsaw, yes, but where did we actually want to fly? Munich, right? I think Warsaw to Munich. There was an, a traffic event. It was a Lufthansa aircraft. So I think we wanted to fly from Warsaw to Munich. That's what we planned to do. And we did afterwards. So we did the leg to Munich. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we, had to, we had to take a second try. Good. So let's switch on the brightness or increase the brightness of our avionics here, of our screens. Primary flight display, navigation display, the e-cams. Same for our, once again, beautiful officer. Did we, sh did we found a name for her yet? I don't think so, right? So she's still not interested in us, as you can see, but I don't think we found a name. Okay, now Rome approach is online. Good, so at least some air traffic control. Good. Now, brightness of the FMS can also increase flight control unit. Remember last time we talked about it, this is the autopilot panel and also the control for yeah, the altimeter here and for the navigation display. So can change different configurations on the navigation display here. And the entire thing here is called flight control unit, or especially this one here. And in Boeing aircraft, it's called MCP, mode control panel. Different naming, but more or less the same thing. And we just increase the brightness of that panel. Okay. And also flat lights and integrated lights. It's 1 p.m. Um, in the afternoon and we are flying into the afternoon, so we might see a nice sunset later. Call her Katrina. Katrina? Yeah, it's an Austrian Airlines flight, could be Katarina. That's a typical German slash Austrian name. Okay, let me already tune in the frequency of Rome approach, just to make sure to test if the radio is working. Frequency is 125.5. As mentioned, no ground controller online at the moment here. Yeah. Okay, that's working. Omea Latif, welcome. Uh, welcome. Um, and yeah, now you should have heard the notification, right? because I switched it on again. So the first thing we do is we go to the init page and we request our flight plan here. We press the request button. 
And we see Lima, India, Romeo Foxtrot to Lima, Oscar, Whiskey, Sierra, which is Rome, Fiumicino, and Salzburg. Our alternate is Munich. Our flight number is Austrian Airlines 6984, which was William's latest miles account before we started the stream. Good. And now, before we do anything else, let's check the briefing together. Still no, no notification sound. That is weird. Should have been on. But otherwise, I need to fix it after the stream. I'm <laughs> really afraid to mess up the stream again here. Uh, it should have been working. Try that once again. Hi there, we are pretty much ready to go up here. Yeah. Uh, we've got the load sheets on board, so once everyone's on board, please uh, feel free to close the doors and uh, we can get going. Okay, great. We'll Did you hear it now? It just repeated it. So there should have been a notification sound of the subscription. So welcome on board this flight. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. So it should have been there. Omar, you got the honor for your, subscription, for your subscription to be shown twice. Anyways, so in the meantime, while I'm waiting for your confirmation, let's go through our flight plan for tonight together. So this is going to be our first leg from I Heard It. Thank you very much. So yeah, it should be activated again. So we are flying. We will be departing in southern direction or southwestern direction over the sea, the Mediterranean Sea here. And then we turn left and left again. We will pass Rome. Rome will be on our left hand side. And then we are flying straight over Italy, Perugia, um, Arezzo, and then Bologna. Uh, I think William, wasn't Bologna your most favorite city? So Bologna, then um, what's the next biggest one? Vincenza, Vicenza. Venice is on our right hand side. And then we will cross the Alps straight towards Innsbruck and then to the right and then towards our standard arrival into Salzburg. Runway three, what, runway one five is planned at the moment by our dispatcher. So now let's go through our briefing document. Our flights roam to Salzburg. Uh, flight number we discussed already, Austrian Airlines 6984, and our call sign is Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, once again. Cost index will be 9, a little higher than usual. Our initial cruising altitude will be flight level 300, and there is a step climb plan, uh, plan for us uh, over Breno, or after Breno to flight level 360, but let's see if we will really do that. For the fuel, so we need roughly 3.5 tons, one hour and 20 minutes to Salzburg. We have a contingency plant of 10% this time, which is uh, which equals 300 kilos, only eight minutes, that's not much. Then we have fuel for our alternate, uh, roughly one ton, 25 minutes from Salzburg to Munich, and our final legal reserve, which is uh, 30 minutes. Our minimum fuel for the takeoff is roughly six tons, and that equals a total flying time of two and a half hours. Once again, even though I told our dispatcher you can, I, I will show it to you later, you can add that manually, so you can, just in real life, you can also add fuel. The captain can always decide how much extra fuel he wants to take. And I actually took 30 minutes of extra fuel, but our dispatcher just, just disregarded that. So no extra fuel for us tonight and a contingency of only eight minutes. There is an air traffic event that could be a little too less from my point of view. So I will probably add some fuel. Um, taxi fuel, 100 kilos. So block fuel is six I'm tons. That's not much. Good. So our route for tonight, Tiba 9 Bravo. Standard instrument departure and then our route, which we don't go through in detail now. And the standard arrival will be the Un Unken, one Romeo, into Innsbruck runway 33. Um, we have 165 passengers and 1.5 tons of cargo, which gives us a total payload of 18.7 tons and a zero fuel weight. So the weight of the aircraft, including pla passengers and cargo of 62.5 tons. The fuel is 6.1 tons, so as mentioned, I will add a little 
maybe let's make it seven tons and our takeoff weight is then yeah if we add seven tons it's 60 69.5 tons yes good the rest is fine these are the winds we don't need to check now but the weather we want to check so the weather here is fine we see that light wind out of western direction 270 degrees temperature 13 degrees celsius q and h the outside air pressure in hectopascal is 1023 no significant change is expected and cloud and visibility is okay in salzburg we have a light wind out of 030 degrees so more or less out of northeastern direction uh, visibility is great, than 9,999 meters, so good visibility, few clouds in 4,000 feet, broken clouds in 4,600 feet, temperature 7 degrees, dew point minus 1, and the outside air pressure is 1035, no significant changes expected, and a pretty similar picture from Munich, which is anyways only a very short hop from Salzburg, so also the weather in Munich looks fine, forecast as well, so we don't have to worry about the weather. Good, that's all we need for now. So let me scroll up to the weights here again and load. let's go back to the flight deck. And let's first of all enter all of that into our flight management system. So the flight plan has been loaded, cost index was nine. Now, before we enter the weights here, let's first load the aircraft accordingly. So we go to the ATSU page. In real life, the aircraft loads itself. Passengers are boarding the aircraft and cargo is also loaded by the ground crew. So we don't have to do that. But here in the simulator, of course, we have to set the weights correctly. So performance, weight and balance. And here we set our block fuel and I said I want to have seven tons. And that's what we are going to load and we send the request. Now we go to the second page and the payload should equal 62.5 for the zero fuel weight. That means we have to add some here. So we will have to add roughly, what was it? 62.5. So we will have to add 2.8 tons. Ah manually so 2.18.7 plus 2.8 is 20 21.5 oh, not point 21.500 zero, zero. yeah now we have a zero fuel weight of 62.5 which is what we want and also here we press load and we send the request and now we see our ground weight is 69.4 which is fine and yeah a little less than seven ton has been loaded for the fuel so yeah that's that's all we want let me increase this uh, decrease the speed of the camera here a little in the cockpit a little too fast for my feeling uh, like so it's better good so next we go to the initialize page and also here we see rome to innsbruck Flight time, estimated time on route. So ETE is one hour and 22 minutes. Let's initialize the flight. And next we do is we request the ATIS. And we want the ATIS for Rome. Lima, India, Romeo, Foxtrot, Rome, Fiumicino. And we want the departure ATIS. You know what, let's this time I think we, we request both because I think there is a difference in the frequency here and since it's the approach controller who is online at the moment I think we have to go for the arrival ATS. It should contain the same information anyways here um, but let's let's try it like that and let's see if we get the ATIS. There it is. So I hope you can see it. Let me go a little closer here. This is Rome information, Victor, at time 17.50, expect ILS approach, arrival runway 16 and 16 right, departure runway 25, this is important for us, transition level 70, wind is calm, cloud and visibility okay, temperature 11, dew point is 9 and Q&H is 1023. 
no significant change is expected. So no sick means no significant change. And advice on initial contact you have, information Victor. That's it. So let's print that. There is our little printer. Here we got it. And this information we need now. So first we contact the controller now and request our clearance to Salzburg. No problem, the prospect is uh, approved. No problem, the prospect is good. Rom, good afternoon. Uh, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey at stand 504 information Victor on board. Request IFR clearance to Salzburg. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, <coughs> apologize. Good evening, Roma Radar. Information on Victor now. You are clear to Lima Oscar Whiskey Serra by Axibri 5 Alpha departure. Keeper 5 Romeo transition, Rangue News 25, initial climb 4000 feet, and the squawk 5530. Clear to Salzburg via Xibri 5 Alpha and the Tibet transition. Um, the squawk is 5530, initial climb 4000 feet, Alitalia 7 Mike Whiskey. Uh, sorry, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Problem of seven Mike is negative, just a confirm transition is the Tuber 5 Romeo. Uh, Roger Xebri 5 Alpha and Tiber 5 Romeo transition for Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. From radar, just to confirm, uh, was the read pack correct? Uh, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, today connection with problem. I said uh, negative, just to confirm, uh, transition is the Tiber 5 Romeo. Roger, Tiber 5 Romeo transition for Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, read pack is correct, QNH 1023. QNH 1023, thank you very much. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Yeah, um, the, <laughs> the air traffic, uh, either myself or the air traffic controller had a connection issue in the transition, um, but, or in the, yeah, during the communication. We are cleared by the, the Xebri 5 Alpha and the Tiber 5 Romeo transition, standard instrument departure. And something went wrong there in our communication. I, th I thought I re I read that back, but maybe I didn't. I'm not sure. Good. So Q&H is set. And now let's configure the rest properly here. So we go to flight plan, to our departure. And what we want is runway 25. And now I am interested in the Xebri 5 Alpha. And the transition is the Tiber. Oh, that was wrong. So once again, Xebri 5 Alpha. And the transition is the Tiber transition, this one. So runway 25, Xebri 5 Alpha Tiber transition. That's what we want. Insert. We also check our arrival already based on what the dispatcher gave us and he or she, who was our dispatcher tonight? Let me check that again. Our dispatcher was <laughs> Estrada Melba. So probably a she. Estrada sh sounds like or Melba. I don't even know what's the first and last name. Uh, anyways, ILS15 she gave us. 
and the Unka one Romeo. Um, control, a little uh, six seven two, ready for pushback. In Standard the arrival via Salzburg VR. Yeah, that's correct. Insert. Okay, now our flight plan should be complete. No discontinuity. Yes, that's fine. So let's continue and let's go to our initialize page. Now we enter the weights. So zero fuel weight is 62.5. And the center of gravity was, this I need to check again. I think the center of gravity was 30 or a little less. Uh, no return. AOC, performance, weight and balance. Center of gravity is 30, yes. Okay. So once again, 62.5 is our zero fuel weight in tons. Center of gravity is 30.0. That's the distribution of the weight. Um, and our block fuel is seven tons. Uh, but now it's a little less. Now it's already 6.9. So here, 6.9, two tons. And now this page should pre-fill. There it is, yeah. Or automatically fill up, yeah. We see our trip fuel, 2.9 tons. And yeah, alternate fuel, final time, and so on and so forth. So that's all in. Now we go to the performance page. And for this, we do the performance calculation together once again. So this is the performance calculator, A320 CFM engines, metric Unix units. We depart in Rome, we request the latest weather and we just check it's the same temperature, 11 degrees, Q and H is matching, wind is matching. We will be departing with flaps one plus F, packs will be on, NTIs will be off, runway is dry. Takeoff weight is 69,500. That's 30. Runway is 2,5. And we will re request the full length. Or we plan with the full length of the runway. The rest is fine. Now we press calculate and we see our flex temperature. So the artificial degradation of the engine's rust uh, is 54 degrees. Takeoff speeds is 149 for V1, which is the speed until which we can safely abort the takeoff. VR, the rotation speed is 152. And V2, the safe climb speed is 154. And all of this we need to feed our hungry flight management system. So let's start with the V speeds, 149. VR is 152. And V2 is 154. The transition altitude here in Rome is 6,000 feet. This is the altitude where we will change our altimeter setting from um, from the actual outside air pressure of the airport to the standard value. Flaps configuration is one and the trimming according to our calculation is down 0.3. And the flex temperature is 54. Good. All of that is set up properly. So flight plan is in. Uh, the only thing I do here in the fly-by-wire mod usually is go to performance, next flight phase, and we select the selected speed here. Because at the moment we still cannot set a speed limit. That's why after takeoff for the climb, I always select the selected speed mode uh, with 230 knots just to prevent us from over speeding below 10,000 feet. Good. That's it. We are more or less set up. The boarding is also completed. That means we can now go ahead and disconnect the jetways. Also the ground power unit. Good. Jetway is disconnected. 
Now let's already switch on the wings and the beacon lights, but before we do anything else, the APU is running. Yes. And we can, of course, switch off the external Uncle power. Welcome, everybody. And flight services, we have another quiz tonight. Two quizzes even are prepared. Good. So I switched on the fasten seatbelt signs and now let's go through the before start checklist. Cockpit preparation is completed. Gear pins and covers are removed. Signs are on. ADRS is set to enough fuel quantity, 6.9 tons. Takeoff data is set and the barrel reference is set to 1023 on both sides. That's checked. Before start checklist below the line, windows and doors are closed. Beacon light is on. Thrust levers are set to idle. Checked. And the parking brake is set. Before start checklist is complete. Let's now request startup and pushback clearance. Can you repeat the, the seat uh, procedure, please, Olympic 57? Olympic 527, I you a message. Uh, must be no so, um, while we are waiting for the air traffic controller um, with his current transmission to the other player, this is our standard instrument departure on the charts. So, we are more or less flying straight towards the sea and then left to Xibri and then left. Um, Rome will be on our left hand side here, so left and left. In case of an engine failure after V1, we will anyways depart and take off. Um, we fly yeah, towards the sea to and yeah, sea level is always good. Up, that means uh, no obstacles in our way. Um, also minimum safe altitude here is very low because it's the sea. It's basically sea level. There is nothing in our way. But behind us, Rome, um, the minimum safe altitude is actually 5,800 feet. So yeah, we will just fly towards the sea, try to get the aircraft under control and then contact air traffic control to get back to back to the airport. Um, but hopefully that doesn't have happen. In case we have a failure before V1, uh, we will stop on the runway, evacuate if necessary or taxi back to the terminal. I love the Italian accent, Adam. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Just before the stream started, I went for a walk and saw some 787s and 350s take off. Both beautiful aircrafts, but you know, my favorite is the A350. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rome Radar, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey Stand 504, request startup and pushback. For takeoff language. Oh. Rome Radar, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey Stand 504, request startup and pushback. Control, the mm. Let me try once again. We're on radar, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, stand 504, request startup and pushback. 
Mac, Black Black, uh, problem with connection. So, oh. Alitalia 35, you are leaving my space, and option 2 is available. Monitor Unicode 122, decimal 8, good flight, sir. Confirm that last session was to Alitalia 35. The air traffic controller seems to have some some connection issues. Ground control, Alitalia 672, the hotspot run on H05. Hey, Alitalia 672, welcome back. Uh, wind calm, clear for takeoff, runway 25. Flight deck to ground. Italia. Go ahead, flight deck. We will be ready shortly. Okay, I will hold. Clear takeoff, runway 25. Uh, take off. Uh, Cockhide. Can you come up to the command? Little five thousand. Cockhide. My connection is bad today. <laughs> Sorry. No, sir. The connection of everybody included my connection today. So. Mm. Go ahead. <laughs> so seem to be some network issues on uh, Vatsim tonight. Rome Raider, hello. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, stand 504, request start and pushback. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, push and start are approved, facing north. Push and start approved, facing north, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Good, so we got our start and pushback clearance, we run through the checklist. So that means let's contact ground now. Oh, okay, let's call our pushback driver again. Flight deck to ground. We are ready for startup for pushback and engine start. Roger. Release the parking brake range. Parking brake is released. Pushing back. And let's lock the flight deck door here. Good. There he is. And you get the safety announcement first of all. Welcome aboard. Before we take off, we're going to give you an important safety briefing. So keep a sharp eye on the cabin crew or the screen in front of you. And together, we'll make sure that your journey is a safe one. Enjoy your flight, guys. Good. So, back to the flight deck. And let's set the parking brake. Parking brake is set. Parking brake is set. Roger. Okay, the tow bar is disconnected and the equipment is clear. We will see on the left side with the pin. Thank you. Good. Let's now start our engines and let's start with engine number one.
Engine number one is running. I would love to get the sound of the engines louder, but it's impossible with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 at the moment. PTU. For whatever reason, the engine sound is very, very quiet. Good. So engine number one is running. Let's start engine number two. And this we do from the inside, as always. So we see bleed air from the yeah from the APU and from the first engine now. And N2 revolutions are now increasing. Couple of seconds, we will see positive fuel flow and ignition here. You see ignition B is active now. Positive fuel flow, 160 kilos per hour pumped into the engine. And the combination of fuel and ignition makes the fuel ignite. And we see therefore the exhaust gas temperature here is rising and will stabilize at around 500 Celsius. And also N1 revolutions, so the main fan starts to spin now. Yeah, that changed, Manuel. That changed, I agree. So I don't know why, but here in Microsoft Flatsman 2020, with the latest update, for whatever reason, the sounds are a little more quiet, and I haven't found out how to increase only the sound of the engines, because otherwise also everything else is louder. Um, but I just want the engine sounds to be a little more louder. But I need to find that out. Maybe there is a way. We'll have to remember that for next time. Yeah, I agree. Now it's barely audible, the PTU and also the engines. Good, both engines are running. Engine mode selector back to normal. We can switch on the weather radar and the predictive wind shear warning system, PWS. And we don't need the APU anymore, so APU bleed off. And master switch off. Strobes we can set to auto, taxi lights already to on. Okay. After start checklist, anti ice is off, VCAM status is checked, pitch trim we do now set to down 0 0.3. This is the trim wheel here, this white and black wheel. And here we see the pitch trim setting and it's now set to down 0 0.3 exactly as calculated. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. One to one, Desmond Niner. Thank you, Austrian South Mike Whiskey. Okay, now a ground controller is also online again. That means we switch to back to the ground controller. One to one, Desmond Nine. But before we continue with our checklist, before we contact him, so pitch trim is set, um, and the rudder trim is zero, should be zero usually, and it's zero, and we can reset it once again so that's fine no we arm the ground spoilers we set the flaps to one for the takeoff configuration what i forgot to do is to check the flight controls this we do now so for left and we see the left ailerons on the wing are all up for right right up and now the elevators full up neutral full down neutral checked and the rudder full left neutral full right neutral checked so the flight controls are also checked good now we set the auto brakes to max and here we see the automated takeoff checks and we inform our cabin crew to take seats for takeoff And we can press the takeoff config button here. And now we see the ECAM takeoff check is all green, no blue item left, which is fine. Now let's go through the before takeoff checklist. Flight controls are checked, flight instruments are checked, briefing is confirmed. So any failure before V1, we stop on the runway. Any failure after V1, we will take off, fly runway heading. We anyways fly towards the sea, so we have plenty of room to get the aircraft under control. Then we contact air traffic control. Flaps are set to config one plus F. V1 is, let me check that once again. V1, 149, VR, 152, V2, 154, and the flex temperature is 54 degrees. That's checked, ATC is set, and ECAM memo is 
take off, as we see here, and no blue item left, so take off, no blue. Before takeoff checklist is complete. Now let's contact Roma Grounds and request our taxi clearance. We are here, stand 504, now facing north east direction. And this is runway 25 here. So we will probably have to taxi via November Whiskey, Golf, and then Delta to Delta Mike, I guess. Let's see. Rome Ground, good evening, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey with you. Request taxi to the runway. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, uh, good evening. Uh, can you confirm you're on November Whiskey? We should be on November Whiskey. We are slightly to the right of November Whiskey, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Uh, Roger, taxi to holding point, uh, Bravo Alpha, runway 25. The November Whiskey, Hotel, Papa, and Bravo. Taxi to Holding Point, Bravo Alpha, Runway 25, via November Whiskey, Hotel, and Bravo, uh, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. So, yeah, slightly different taxi instruction November Whiskey, then Hotel, and then Bravo to Runway Bravo Alpha. Well, uh, to Holding Point, Bravo uh, Alpha. So, uh, contact Romer Radar on 125, decimal 5, bye. The airport chart as well. Bravo Alpha is here, so November Whiskey, Hotel, and then Bravo to Bravo Can Alpha. Repeat, please? Like seven. Olympic Good. Seven, contact Roma Radar on Left is clear. Five, this is me, by five. the way. Bye bye. One In a slightly, five, a slightly more seven. handsome version. Right is clear. That means we can start taxiing. Let's release the parking brake. Ground, and uh, let's go. Cap, uh, two whiskey for two, Buenos Aires. Uh, requesting clearance to Vienna. As no cap, uh, could you please repay your call sign? Sorry. I will take terrain on my side, and our no first cap, officer will get the weather. No cap, two whiskey for two. Um, good evening. You are clear to uh, Vienna via Sosi via Alpha standard departure. 717 Alpha transition. Runway for departure is 25, initial climb 4000 feet. And the next to the left five, here five, is five, Hotel. Squawk is 5556 five, five, and it's the Zova 5 Alpha departure route with the Zova 7 Alpha transition. And the initial altitude is 4000. Uh, okay. Now next to the right, and then two straight whiskey. onto Bravo. No gap, two whiskey for two, uh, really case correct, go for push and start. Switch on the runway turn off lights. Off Johnson, six mic whiskey please, is Squawk 5530. Squawk 5530, Austrian seven mic whiskey. Okay, uh, we do see brake max climb and nav already in our primary flight display. Initial climb was 4,000 feet. I should have said that way before. <laughs> Thanks, Manhattan William, for donating five dollars. Will we have a bird strike today? Who knows? I don't hope so. Um, visibility is fine, so if so, we should see the birds but we won't be able to avoid it. I don't hope we will have a bird strike tonight because we have two legs planned for tonight, two interesting ones. And I don't hope we will have a bird strike. Good, so 4000 as our initial altitude target is set. Climb, nav and speed brake uh, uh, and brakes max, auto brake max in blue. So that's exactly as it should be for now. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, uh, please contact Roma Radar on 125.5. Bye bye. 125.5, uh, grazie mille, arrivederci. 
How do you like my Italian? Last time we had Arabic, <laughs> this time Italian. <laughs> Good, 125.5. We anyways had that frequency already dialed in from, bef because we talked to Radar already before. Okay, next to the left is Bravo Bravo. Uh, so the second should be Bravo Alpha. It's the longest, longest runway distance we can get here. So, music off for now. Alitalia triple seven, maintain present heading. Continue present heading, Alitalia triple seven. Rome Raider, hello again. Austrian seven mic whiskey at holding point. Bravo Alpha, ready for departure. Austrian seven mic whiskey, hello again. Wind the Calmos, get for takeoff for runway two five. After departure, Spock Island. Clear for takeoff 25 and after departure, Squawk Island, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Good, we are taxiing onto a runway, strobe lights on and takeoff lights on. Austrian 777, turn left heading 250 degrees. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you. Austrian triple, Alitalia triple seven left. Uh, Before takeoff checklist below the line, takeoff runway two five. Can you please confirm that runway two five? Cabin crew is advised. TKS, we do now set to T A N R A. That's set. Engine mode selector is normal and the packs are on. Before takeoff checklist below the line is complete, we are ready for takeoff. So let's switch on the takeoff lights. On the landing lights, chrono. We start. Uh, the chrono is running. Good. So, thrust to roughly 50%. Stable. Manuel, thank you very much. Runway 25 is confirmed. So, take off. Manflex 54 SRS runway and auto thrust blue. Checked. V1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Italia 777, turn left heading. Autopilot on. Degrees, descent, and as requested, we press ident. Continue climb to flight level 180, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Thrust climb. First climb is set and we are clear to climb to flight level 180. 180 is selected and we go to open climb. Olympic flight 27, you are leaving my space, do not shoot the TV for one to use go one to two decimal eight. Good flight shot. Thank you very much, uh shooting to unicorn. Speed check flips up. Austrian seven Mike Whiskey, proceed to direct deeper. Direct to Tiba, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Okay, we are cleared direct to Tiba. So we go to direct Tiba and we will see there will be a yellow line. There should be a yellow line, let's try that again. Uh, because it's behind us, we don't see it now. But let's select direct to Tiba. Direct. Now the aircraft turns left. Which is nice because then we will most likely fly straight over Rome. 
Yeah, we should be flying straight over Rome. We are above transition altitude, 6,000 feet, which is why we see the, the squawk, the QNH blinking here or flashing. And that means we can switch to standard now. Standard set, 7,100, cross checked, 7,100. Alessandro, Beautiful, isn't it? Okay. Look at this. Look at this. A container ship even and the airport is here so this is the airport of rome and let me briefly set switch off the landing lights here 10,000 landing lights off and i will activate the passenger services for you as well just a second so passenger services are now activated. Approved. No speed restriction. Bye bye. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Look at this beautiful. This is the airport. Just the sound of the. This is the airport, and it's an uh, add-on scenery for free on flightsim.to, and I can really recommend it. Direct Tibet Pegasus six two zero nine. Thanks. Yeah, free Vestin shots on all Captain Mayday flights. <laughs> <laughs> and where is Rome now? Rome is on our right, so this is Rome here. Probably it's rather here. No, it should be here. It should be now exactly to our right. This is Rome. Ah, looks a little darker here because it's a 3D city in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. But this is Rome here. It's all in 3D, so yeah, all the real buildings, also the satellite imagery here is one by one, just like in real life, and the buildings here are really all 3D buildings, which is why in the city center, the building here look a little more dark. Um, it's because they are really scanned. So can we zoom in? Mm, we'll do the following. Oh, let's go to the first officer. On the lap of our first officer, we will check <laughs> the city center of Rome. Look at this beautiful. Uh, not everything is loaded, so uh, now now we see some of the buildings are get loaded. This is still what I don't like with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. One to two decimal eight. Thank you very much. Ciao. Um, yeah, you see, these are all 3D buildings. If you get closer, they look really, really good. Uh, from the distance, of course, zoomed in, it doesn't look that nice. But if you look from here, this really looks like Rome. This is the stadium. Beautiful. And this is the this is the um, Peterstone. Is it called Peterstone in English? In German, it's called Peterstom. So that's it. I think this is of course the train station or the main station here. Nice, really, really nice. I like it. Yeah, as mentioned, if you get closer, then it looks even better. But from the distance. Okay. So let's go back. 
And since there is no air traffic control available, we continue our climb to our final cruising level and we go back to the managed speed mode, first of all. And then we will climb in open climb mode to flight level 300. We can also disarm the ground spoilers now. And let's go through the after takeoff checklist. Uh, After takeoff checklist. Uh, Landing is up, flaps are retracted, packs are on. By reference, is set to standard. After takeoff checklist is complete. St. Peter's Basilica, it's called. Thank you, William. Thank you very much. St. Peter's Basilica. All roads lead to Rome. <laughs> Let's check if that is true. Let's let's first take the exterior view here. There is road, uh, Rome, and yeah, a lot of roads, definitely not all, but a lot of roads <laughs> lead to Rome and a river as well. <laughs> yeah. That's how it looks like, and the airport is behind us here. Beautiful. So, you know the drill, guys. You are already feeding our passengers and making them very happy. Satisfaction is 99%. Yeah, you're making them very happy. And they are, of course, even more happy now because we have started to serve uh, food. Ah, why isn't that working again? Just give me a second here. I need to correct the overlay. Of course, we want to have the right overlay for the food. Now it's working. Good. Here we go. So we are serving food and in-flight enter in entertainment is on. Wi-Fi. And of course, since we are flying out of Italy, we start with pizza. And what do you think about Aperol Spritz for the start? Pizza and Aperol Spritz. Captain Robbie, uh, I am using a really cheap Amazon headset. Uh, my headset is really not special. A really cheap Amazon headset. Um, it has. It, it claims to have 7.1 audio, so Dolby surround audio. Uh, I I doubt it, <laughs> but <laughs> it does a job. It I don't know. It's a 30 30 or 40 euro headset. Nothing special. Uh, it's it's no special brand. Let me check. Just give me a second. It's called Napvo. Napvo. Like so. That's the the brand of my headset, uh, but I doubt you know the brand. <laughs> Roger, thank you. And uh, if you're not able, you can change it to NCAP 3 Alpha Rival. Okay, so we will first climb to our cruising level, which is flight level 300 tonight, our initial cruising level at least. And then we will start a round of quizzing. Welcome, Captain Robbie. Beautiful weather, really just some clouds. Of course, we are again on live weather. Um, 
in Austria, it should also be okay. A little more clouds, broken clouds and 5,000 feet roughly. And in Switzerland, it could get quite windy and also cloudy on our second leg. And yeah, we have a quiz prepared once again, uh, which we will start once we, once we reach our cruising level. Then as always, we will start preparing our approach and we will cross the Alps and hopefully get some scenic views over the Alps and yeah you have a problem do I have a problem do you see the stream clearly guys is the picture okay let me know on the stream I don't see any issues here on my side Roger, so speed that is 6942, maintain present heading and expect to back. So. Maintain present heading and expect to expect to back. Pegasus 6209. Okay, so it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> We had sufficient issue, uh, sufficient issues with uh, with the stream lately, but the last two or three streams it was fine again. Thank you, guys. It has some few legs. Hmm. On my end, it looks okay, but yeah. I mean the the scenery in in Italy out of the box of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is really amazing. I like I like the the satellite pictures they have. They they really have a lot of 3D cities in Italy. I think Rome, Milano, um, Venice, for sure, and also Naples we saw, and probably some more. So they have 3D cities in Italy and the look at the I mean this looks like real the satellite pictures here are really amazing really amazing satisfaction 100% I don't know when we achieved that last time guys our passengers seem to be very very happy tonight because you are serving a lot of food and drinks very good Okay, how high are we now? Probably cruising level. Yes, flight level is 300. That means prepare yourself for the quiz. Um, we are landing in Austria, in Austria, Salzburg Airport and we departed out of Rome in Italy and now we are flying towards the Alps and then we will cross the Alps and then land in Salzburg in in Austria. Good, but now, as always guys, prepare yourself for the quiz. Um, I will send the link and the code as always in the chat, but we wait five minutes or three, three to five minutes before we start the quiz really. So you have some minutes to join. If you only have one device, you do not have to leave the stream immediately can of course do so but then you will have to wait in the lobby of the quiz so um yeah you can also wait until um i do the countdown once again in the in the chat here in the stream what time are you landing uh you see the um estimated time of arrival or re estimated remaining flight time in the overlay on top so what does it say at the moment you can also check it here so here it says we arrive at 15.47 UTC, simulation time, and it is 14.57 at the moment. So in roughly 40 to 50 minutes, we will land in Salzburg. Okay. Thank you, Manuel. Good. And now let me send the link for the quiz in the chat. This is the link. And let me also open it here.
Here we are. First one drowning, very good. <laughs> you want to see me crash? That won't happen tonight. That won't happen tonight. I'm pretty certain that won't happen tonight. We, we would need a serious issue, but we try to simulate it as real as possible, so I won't crash intentionally. If I do, we, we did a couple of times in my streams, but then it usually was a hardware bug. Even with the bird strike, we managed to land. Yeah, as always, the winner in the quiz, those of you who join my stream frequently know it, the winner of the quiz will get 20 additional miles to his account. If we are more than seven players, then also the second and third rank will get miles, 10 and five miles. And with that miles, you can get a seat in the first class here. So we are now one, two, three, four, five. So two are missing, so that uh, the first three get miles. It's a quiz. You can participate by going to www.menti.com, the address you see on top, and type in the code 5234409 and your username. And it's just a quiz where you can participate and the winner will get 20 miles on his account. <laughs> wait for me, yes. So we wait, let's say, let's wait four minutes. Four minutes before we start the quiz. It gives me time to drink something. Only water tonight. So, three minutes before we start the quiz. And since there are also viewers on Twitch this time, uh, let me also copy the link to the quiz for the Twitch viewers. If you want to participate, just click on the link and type in the code 5234409 and your username. And with that, you can first of all participate in the quiz just for fun. You cannot lose anything and the first three will get miles. First, first one will get 20 miles kept Mayday miles and um, not miles and more miles, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> and here on the right side, we see the Adria coast. Two minutes before we start. Beautiful. Could it get any more beautiful? I mean, now you only see it on the small screen, but you will see it later again. No cloud in the sky. Beautiful scenery here in Italy on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Just amazing. Okay, I would say one minute before we start. Weather is really nice today, yes. Yeah, 
Yeah, Brian, I think everybody else wants to quiz nevertheless, so we do the quiz. As always, we do the quiz. Some entertainment on cruising level is always nice. Good. And let's say 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and let's start with the first question. What is the capital of Italy? That's an easy one. <laughs> what is the capital of Italy? Rome, Milano, Venice, or Florence? What is the capital of Rome? Rome, Milano, Venice, or Florence. Ten seconds to go. Everybody voted, and Rome is of course correct. Nine correct answers, that was easy. Next question. Our first the ranking, of course, as always. Let's see who was the fastest. We have everybody was pretty close. So who was the fastest? Hell driver was the fastest. Then Manuel, Captain Robbie, Cello, King Paul, Rainy William, Santa Adam, Speedy Donuts, and Roby. Good. Question two out of five. What is the biggest airport in Italy? Is that Milano Malpensa, Rome Fiumicino, Venice or Bergamo? What is the biggest airport in Italy? Milano, Rome, Venice or Bergamo? And <laughs> most of you are incorrect. Rome is the biggest airport. Milano is the second biggest airport, but Rome is the biggest airport in Italy, also the hub for Alitalia. Um, of course, Alitalia is also flying out of Milano. Um, also long haul flights out of Milano, if I'm not mistaken. But the major hub is Rome Fiumicino. So Rome Fiumicino is also the biggest airport in Italy. Next, first of all, let's see who was right and who was the fastest. Only Helldriver and Adam were correct, and Helldriver was again the fastest one. So Helldriver, uh, currently in the lead, closely followed by Adam, and then a gap to Manuel, Captain Robbie, Cello, King Paul, Rennie Williams, Speedy Donuts, and Roby. Good, question three out of five. Which famous person is from Salzburg, the destination where we are flying to? Leonardo da Vinci, Ludwig van Beethoven, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart or Johann Sebastian Bach? Which famous person is from Salzburg in Austria? Leonardo da Vinci, Ludwig van Beethoven, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart or Johann Sebastian Bach? And Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart is correct. Also famous sweets. Mozart Kugel, cho chocolate with uh, marzipan inside, uh, is from, from Salzburg as well. And Mozart, the famous composer and musician, is from Salzburg. And correct were William, Robbie, Cello, Paul, and Speedy Donuts. And this time, Cello was the fastest. That means Cello is now in the lead, followed by William. Paul, Hell Driver, Captain Robbie, Adam, Speed Donuts, Manuel and Roby. Question 4 out of 5. Red Bull is from Salzburg. But where is the original recipe from? Vietnam, China, India or Thailand? Red Bull. The famous drink is originally produced, or I think, I, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure, but I think um, that the factory or one of the factories is still in Salzburg, but at least the company is listed in Salzburg. And the original recipe is from Thailand, and also one of the owners um, and the major shareholder of Red Bull 
is from Thailand, so he is the owner of the original recipe and he, ho he still holds shares and he got billionaire by just, uh, yeah, inventing the recipe, just, but by inventing the recipe and selling it to Didi Mateschitz, the Dieter Mateschitz, the founder of Red Bull. And he's also a billionaire now, but the, the Thai guy as well, without really, as far as I'm aware, he's not really involved in the company, he just invented the recipe. And yeah, he is a very lucky and rich person now. Good, correct were William, Hay Driver, Captain Robbie, Santa and Manuel. And the fastest one this time was Manuel. So William is in the lead, followed by Hay Driver, Captain Robbie and Adam. Last question for tonight, or not for tonight, but for our first quiz tonight. Question five out of five. What is the highest mountain in Austria? And you actually see it on the picture. Is that the Matterhorn, the Zugspitze, the Gro Groß Glockner, or the Mont Blanc? Which mountain do you see on the picture? And it is also the highest mountain in Austria. What is the highest mountain in Austria? The Matterhorn, the Zugspitze, the Groß Glockner, or the Mont Blanc? Seven seconds to go. And Groß Glockner is correct. Matterhorn is in Switzerland. It's actually not the highest mountain in Switzerland. The highest mountain in Switzerland is the Dufour Spitze. Um, but it's the most famous mountain in Switzerland. The Zugspitze is the highest mountain of Germany. Groß Glockner is the highest mountain of Austria. And Mont Blanc is at least the most famous mountain in France, but I think also the highest mountain in France. Good, let's see who was right. Captain Robbie, Adam, Cello, Paul and Speedy Donuts were correct. Oh, that leads to some changes that brought William back. That means Adam won the quiz again. Adam, congratulations. Followed by Captain Robbie and Cello. And Captain Robbie and Cello, if you want to get your miles, you need to send me your username once again in the chat. So just write something in the chat on YouTube or Twitch, wherever you are watching. Um, and your name in the quiz next to it so I see uh, who you are because I think you are new to the stream and then I can put the miles onto your account. Congratulations and Adam, congratulations to you as well. 20 miles will go to your account already. Yeah, that was a last minute overtake, Adam. Last minute overtake. Congratulations, Adam. So, Adam. Adam. 20 miles I will already put onto your account. You had 5,000. And 709 miles. You will now have 5,729 miles. Congratulations. And thank you very much again because you are most one of the most frequent travelers. And um, Cello, okay, Cello got you. So Cello, 20 miles will go to your account as well. Marcellerich, so let me see if I find you already. Yeah, Marcellerich, you're new to the stream. Uh, you only had 10 miles so far, you will now have 20 miles, so 10 additional miles were added. And Captain Robbie is Captain Robbie. Okay, Captain Robbie. Five miles will go to your account. Captain Robbie. Yeah, Captain Robbie, you had 30 miles, you will now have. 35 miles. Good. Back to the stream and we see ahead of us already the Alps and ahead of us what is the next biggest city we could see here. So of course we see the Alps and some clouds there in the distance but what is the next biggest city we will pass? Oh, Williams, Williams most favorite city. So let's jump into the cockpit again. And Bologna 
Should be somewhere here. Yeah, ah, it's already behind us. There is Bologna. And here is the airport of Bologna. You remember we flew there two or three times in my streams. So here is the city center of Bologna and this is the airport of Bologna. Beautiful, isn't it? There's this light haze layer here and the mountains. Reflection on the rivers and the lakes. Beautiful. And ahead of us, so to our right, is Venice. Venice is here. Actually, this is, I think this is Venice. Venice is actually on, on a little island, but the airport is... Let me check that on the map. Venice is on an island. Yes, this is Venice. So the city center of Venice. And the airport is left of that so this is the airport here is the runway of venice and venice itself is here the old town of venice and this here is padua and vincenza uh, Vincenza should be straight ahead of us. So this is Vincenza here. And there we see the Alps already. And to our left here, further down here, there should be Milano. Yeah. Milano is here. Beautiful flight weather tonight. <laughs> yeah, Marcel Rich, first time, uh, first time on the stream, at least first time we see your name and immediately second place in the quiz. Congratulations and congratulations to all of you because the passenger satisfaction is 100% still. We could break our record tonight. So far, the highest we ever achieved once we were at the gate was 96%. So with 100% in the air already, I just need to butter the landing. <laughs> no pressure on me. We just need to butter the landing again and then everything should be fine. No, just started the replay tool as well. Yeah, I love Italy, really. I really love Italy. It's a great place. I also like Italians. Um, yeah, just a nice place on earth. And great food, great culture, um, great people, great, um, yeah, different places, great beaches, great old towns, a lot of history as well. If you go to Rome, if you're into, into history, Great cars, never, uh, uh, how, how, what did I want to say? Not nevertheless, I wanted to say great cars as well. Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini, Fiat, <laughs> Fiat as well. <laughs> and of course, Alfa Romeo, so like great sports cars as well, if you're into that. Great country, and here in the background, that's Venice. This is the island of Venice. And yeah, it's always flooded, especially during spring and sometimes also in the winter. They have a lot of flooding problems. And it's interesting, if you, if you go to Venice and you will see a lot of restaurants that are below ground level and they are always flooded. This is Vincenza. No, Vicenza, Vicenza is... Um, Ahead of us, this is Padua, and Vicenza is here. On our um, left-hand side, somewhere here, so below my picture now, should be Lago di Garda, the famous lake of Garda. Should be straight to our left now. Let's go to the passenger, oh no, let's go to the captain's view. Where is it? 
And look at this imagery. It's really, really, it's so much fun to fly if you know that this is real satellite picture. All of the cities here are just as they are in real life. Where is, where is the Lago di Garda? Should be straight to our left, but a little further in background. Ah, it's here. That's it. Lago di Garda. Also a very beautiful place on Earth. And this is the beginning of the Alps, the Italian Alps. And here we see it skiing. So what is this mountain we see here? That's... I don't know, let me, let me see if I can find the... I actually don't know where Großglockner is in Austria, so the highest mountain we just saw in the picture. But let me see if I can find that on the map. Großglockner. Where is that on the map? Will we pass it? Yeah, it should be more or less exactly on our way. So it's after... What is the next city here? After Linz and before Caprun. Okay, let me see if I find that here on the map. After Linz and before Caprun. I know we are flying straight to Innsbruck now, so it's further to the right. Ah. Glockner, the highest mountain in in Austria, is here, somewhere here, in this area, and we are flying straight to Innsbruck. So, at the moment, we are here, and we just passed Vicenza, and Bolzano should also be very close here. Where is Bolzano? So this is still Italy here. all Italy. Here is Bolzano. We will fly over Bolzano. What is this waypoint called here? Naxav. So Bolzano is over Naxav. And then this is the border to, to Austria here. Then there is Innsbruck. This is already the border to Germany. Then we will fly into the German airspace from their right. And then a little up. Munich is here. And then straight into Salzburg. Okay, so we can now already plan our approach as well, since we are anyways on the charts. We will take the Unken, one Romeo arrival, and this is how it looks like on the maps. So at Unken, we should be at 7,000 feet, and we see there is high terrain here. These are the Alps. And then from Unken, we fly to Salzburg VOR. So this is a VOR, yeah, more or less exactly over the city or close to the city of Salzburg. And from there, we turn right and then into the ILS approach for runway 15 and Salzburg, the city center is here, will be on our left hand side and we will see it very well. Um, so yeah, at Unken 7,000 feet and we stay on 7,000 feet until Salzburg and here we descend to 4,000, or here we should be at 4,000 feet. So 7,000, 7,000 and then 4,000 feet and then we turn right and then we check the final approach chart so here to the right and then into the ILS approach runway 15 this is the frequency we will double check 
and for the altitudes at the Salzburg VOR we should be at 4000 feet. We stay on 4000 feet until 8 miles, 8 DME out of Oscar Echo Sierra which is the uh, ILS of the airport. So Echo, uh, Oscar Echo Sierra is here and 8 miles out is roughly here. This is where we will start descending with the glide slope. So we stay on 4000 feet after the OR and then we descend with the glides down to runway 15. The minimum decision altitude is 1880 feet and visibility should be fine. So runway visibility range should not be a problem tonight. Minimums as well shouldn't be a problem because according to the latest ATIS, the clouds were reported at 4600 feet. So that should be fine. And this is all we need for now. In case of a missed approach, we will have to turn left immediately. So we fly two miles out of Oscar Echo Sierra, two miles runway heading, and then we turn left after two miles and fly back to Oscar Echo Sierra. And from there we get radar vectors probably. So let's see what it says. Climb straight ahead to DME 2.0 out of Oscar Echo Sierra. So two miles straight runway heading. Then turn left, climb via Sierra India um, and then to Salzburg and the BVOR to 6000 feet and hold. So yeah, we turn, we turn left to Oscar Echo Sierra and then we climb to 6000 and fly back to Salzburg. But probably we will anyways get vectors then here from air traffic control. We will have to take care because left and right is high terrain, 11,000 feet. So there is really only this valley where we can maneuver in could get interesting. So that's all we need to know for now. Let's enjoy some summer views of the Alps here. Passenger satisfaction is still 100%. Let me see if I missed anything in the chat. Now you wonder how Mount Everett would look like. Yeah, so the... How high is the Großglockner? Probably around 4000 meters. I know the Matterhorn is something like 4,100 and the highest mountain in Switzerland is 4,600. And the Zugspitze is not that high. Mont Blanc is also something like 4,000 probably. So let's check, let's check. Highest mountains, mountains, uh, Alps. So the highest mountain, no, Mont Blanc is even higher. Hmm. It says Mont Blanc is 4,809 meters. Matterhorn is 4,400 meters. And what about the Großglockner? Großglockner, the highest mountain in Austria. I always thought the Dufourspitze was higher than Mont Blanc, but obviously that's wrong. So the Großglockner is only 3,800 meters. And the Zugspitze, the highest mountain in Germany, is... Zugspitze only 2,962 meters. So, yeah, Mont Blanc 4,800 meters. Then we have the... Um, the Matterhorn is 4,400 meters. Dufourspitze is something like 4,600, 4,700 meters. Großglockner 3,900 and the Zugspitze in Germany is only 2,960. Yeah, so how would Mount Everest look like? It's almost double the size. <laughs> it's 8,000 meters. How high is it exactly, Mount Everest? Mount Everest is check that here 8849 meters yeah more or less double the size of the highest mountain in the Alps this is a beautiful view with all of the mountains in the background just like an advertisement for Austrian Airlines
Yeah, we can do that once, Manuel. I mean, we could do that as one of the landing challenges next time. Um, or just a scenic, scenic tour around the Mount Everest. Probably it will look very nice. I could imagine they had some, some nice photogrammetry of that. But I'm not sure. So how far are we out now? We should care about our descent soon. We are now 138 miles out. So roughly at 100 miles we should start our descent. And we can enter our destination data now. Let's first request the ATIS of Salzburg. So ATIS Salzburg and we want the arrival ATIS. Let's send that. Can I put this away? No. So receive messages. ATIS. This is Salzburg. Information hotel at time. 1750. Arrival one way is 15. Very good. This is what we planned with. Transition level 110. Wind 300. Out of uh, wind, wind out of 300 degrees with three knots. Visibility more than 10 kilometers, so great visibility. Few clouds in 5,000 feet. Temperature 5 degrees. Dew point zero now. QNH 1035. Very high air pressure. No significant change is expected and advise we have information hotel. Let's print that again. Good. Should be here now, yes. Good, so let's verify if we have that in, but we have Innsbruck runway 15 selected and the arrival is Unken 1 Romeo via Salzburg VOR so that's fine just as we wanted now let's go to the performance page next phase approach and we type in the information from the airport terminal information so from the ATIS we just printed QNH the outside air pressure in hectopascal is 1035 temperature 5 degrees wind is blowing out of 300 degrees so northwestern direction with three knots transition level is 110 and the minimum decision altitude was according to our charts 1880 feet so if we don't see the runway at 1880 feet above ground then or not above ground barometric altitude but at 1880 feet then we will have to abort our landing and go around so that's all in now back to the flight plan we are now 119 miles out and our top of descent is roughly in 20 miles from here so in 20 miles we will have to start our descent and Innsbruck is now we are now exactly over the border to Austria so this is exactly here the border between Austria and now exactly over the border um, let me change the view here so this is exactly the border between Austria and Italy behind us is Italy and in front of us and now below us is Austria and Innsbruck is here in this valley this is where we had a lot of approaches into already this is Innsbruck no it won't be foggy tonight it won't be foggy visibility is reported good with more than 9999 meters so visibility should definitely be fine Now let's contact ah, München Radar, frequency 124 decimal 05. 12405. See, quite a lot of turbulences here. 
Oh, that was a lag. Just had a major lag in my simulator, but now it's okay again. München, hello, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey with your flight level 300. Proceed to BAT-V, expect BAT-V level 130, when ready, descend level 250. Proceed to BAT-V and expect uh, BAT-V at 130 and descend to flight level 250 now, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Guide travel 1242, descend level 220. 250 is selected and open descent. Um, and we should proceed to BATV. BATV. So let's select BATV. That's a nice direct straight to BATV. So we accept that. And now we will see that we fly straight to BATV. That means we don't fly straight over Innsbruck now anymore. We turn right now. Yeah, it's it's pretty quite a lot of turbulences here at the moment over the Alps, which is normal. Um, so there are often some turbulences here over the Alps. Innsbruck is here. Hello, the Delta November Kilo, we are in outbound Walda, beziehungsweise now we empfang the radial 280 inbound Luburg, Flugfläche 105, freigegeben from approach level 100 bis 110 nach Stuttgart auf der Frequenz. Delta November Kilo, that is all understood. One Verkehr war bis eben da, den hätte ich. No passenger satisfaction is really not stuck. It's really 100%. <laughs> you did a great job. <laughs> We served a lot of food and drinks and they had a nice scenic tour. We even did a quiz, so in-flight entertainment was there. The captain, uh, the captain tried his best to introduce all of the different villages we were flying over and, and, uh, and cities we were flying over. So, and look at the turbulences here! That's crazy. That's crazy. So let's switch on the fasten seatbelt signs already. This is really... Shaky. Fast and seatbelt signs on. Let's also tell our cabin crew to take their seats. It's too shaky here at the moment. Switch on the landing system already. One three two one two five. Now you take the frequency is one three two seven two five. I hope you don't spill your drinks exactly. <laughs> We are still serving coffee at the moment. One two three, seven two five, three. Austrian seven, Mike Whiskey, descent level one three zero. Descent level one three zero, Austrian seven, Mike Whiskey. Austrian three, Bravo, Echo, expect taxi level one three zero. One three zero is selected, and once again on the primary flight display, we see thrust is on idle now. Open descent is selected. That means that the aircraft tries to hold the current speed, and just pitches down as fast as possible without increasing the speed. Um, and descending now to flight level 130. So open descent is selected and we have our altitude target and you see how shaky it is because the speed is moving up and down the entire time. 
And also you see that here on the winds. So at the moment we have quite a strong headwind, that's why it's also shaky with 50 knots and it's changing. So pretty shaky here at the moment. And we are on the lateral navigation mode, that means the aircraft is following our uh, programmed flight plan in the FMS. Minimum decision altitude is set to 1880 feet. So there we will hear the minimum call out and this is also the altitude where we have to see the runway. If we don't see the runway here, then we will have to go around. And autopilot one is activated, flight director one and two are activated. Level 150, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Flight travel 1242, rate so of descent 2000. He cleared us to flight level 130 radar. already, but now he changed his mind and Auto only cleared us to uh, flight level 150 for down. now, probably because there is traffic here. Munich should be to our left now. Somewhere here. Ah, this is Munich here. Uh, direct B -block, ready one five. Uh, now since we crossed the Alps, the turbulences got a little better, but it's still shaky. You saw the strong winds and yeah quite some, some gusty winds as well, so they are changing in speeds and uh, yeah, you're right, 50 knots is actually not so much, but over the Alps, uh, of course, so often you have these turbulences of the winds if it's crossing the, the mountains and it's simulated here. So there are nice videos of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 uh, where you see how the wind is passing over the mountains and how the yeah, turbulences um, are created there artificially and it's it's very nicely simulated. München Radar, Air Berlin 239er uh, is at uh, Nuremberg Airport taxiing to holding point runway 28. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, the winds, are, I mean, it, it is gusty, yes, because it was changing in Can speed, but not by three? much. So, um, Stop descent 180 Austrian 7 Mark Whiskey. Airbling 239, we have runway 10 in the So there seems to be traffic here somewhere, but I don't see it. Unfortunately, that's not yet simulated, so we would see it here on our navigation display. But that's not yet simulated. Nächstes Mal auch einfach gerne rufen, bevor du das Pushback machst, dann hätten wir einige Sachen untersparen können. Nimmchen Reider, guten Abend. Nochmal, ich bin hier vor 10 Alpha, with you passing the level 125. Sky Travel 1242, contact Innsport 119 275. Munich Radar, Swiss 1989 with you, flight level 170. Sky Travel 1242, call Innsport 119, that's the mode 275. Go on, Innsport 119, 275, Swiss 199. Sky Travel 1242, 119, that's the mode 275. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, descent level 130. Descent level 130, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. On our left is Rosenheim in Germany. This is Rosenheim here. Climbing level 250 with 0410 Alpha. Climbing level 250 with 0410 Alpha. Now we're clear to descend to 130, so we select 130. Again, open climb, uh, open descent mode. Open descent is selected, altitude target, flight level 130. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, Salzburg 123725. 123725, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, bye bye. Delta November Kilo for München. Delta November Kilo. Delta November Kilo, Verkehrsinformation und Service sind hiermit beendet. Für weitere Informationen langen 105. Salzburg, uh, Servus, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey with you descending to flight level 130. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, uh, Salzburg, Servus, ILS 15, descend 8000 
QNH 1035. We expect ILS 15 descent 8000 and QNH 1035 Austrian sub micro speed. So we set the QNH to the current outside air pressure, which is 1035. We are cleared to descend to 8000 feet now, which is below the transition level, which was 11,000 feet of flight level 110. And that's why we set the altimeter now to the actual current outside air pressure of Salzburg Airport, which is 1035 hectopascal. And he told us that we are cleared are not yet cleared for ILS 15, but that we can expect ILS 15. And Salzburg is now straight ahead of us. This is Salzburg and the airport is somewhere here. And this is the city center of Salzburg. And we will now fly straight and then we turn left and then fly in from the right, uh, from the left. And so we fly straight towards the east then we turn left to the north, then we do a 180 degrees turn and then proceed or proceed towards the south and then onto ILS 15. Traffic is inside Oscar Echo Charlie the Juliet. Oscar Echo Charlie Hotel Juliet, Roger, you may turn back on your transponder, maintain visual separation. So let's select auto brake medium. The runway is not too long in Salzburg, so. Um, we select auto brake medium. How long is the okay, runway actually? Let's check that. The runway is only 2.7 kilometers, 2,750 meters or 9,000 feet. Uh, it's okay, but not very long, so we go with auto brakes medium. Descent 6000 Austrian Southern Micro Ski. So I have the train on my side. Our first officer has the weather, even though there is no weather. So let's. Uh, let's give him the weather, anyways. <laughs> or oh, her. Her better said. We didn't talk about Katarina tonight, but uh, Katarina is still, I don't know, she looks a little bored and not interested in us. Or maybe she's very focused, but she also doesn't do a lot. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing, <laughs> but at least it's a nice enhancement to, to the stream here. She looks nice. That's sufficient for tonight. <laughs> Okay, so we, that's anyways already on, we are below 10,000 feet, so let's switch on the landing lights. And let's go through the approach checklist. Approach checklist, so the briefing is confirmed. In case we have to go around, we fly runway heading for two miles and then we perform... Oh, we do a... St ah, now I have to concentrate, the aircraft is doing crazy things here. Was the last transmission for Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, just to confirm? Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, descent 4000 feet, cleared ILS 15. We sent 4,000, cleared ILS 15, Austrian 7 Mark Whiskey. Okay, um, first things first, so approach checklist, uh, briefing is confirmed. So in case we have to go around, we fly a runway heading for two miles, climb to 6,000, steep left turn back to Salzburg VOR. ECAM status is checked, seatbelt signs are on, bear reference is set to 1035 on both sides. Minimum is set to 1,880 and engine mode selector is set to normal. Good, let's switch off the music now. And the landing rate game is on, guys. So if you want to participate, just type in your expected landing rate in feet per minute. We are cleared for the ILS approach, which is why I did arm the approach mode now. But we are still a little too high, so let me use the speed brakes here. Come crew, please prepare the cover for London. Thank you. 
And let's reduce our speed as well. Ah, and as always, the localizer frequency is not in. Ah! Normally it should do it automatically, but sometimes it doesn't here in Microsoft Flight 2020. So the localizer frequency is 109.9. Now it's in. We are still quite high. Speed check flaps one. further reduce our speed and let's activate the approach mode so our approach speed is 134 uh, we are too high we can't you see we are way too high so we we will request vectors Yes, please, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. We are too high. We request rectus. Roger, approach, uh, sorry, approach clearance is cancelled. Turn left heading 010, maintain 4000. Left heading 010 and maintain 4000. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Ah, we need to deactivate the approach mode first. 010, zero, zero. yeah, we, we were too high. So. Uh, <laughs> S straight from the beginning, um, remember the the controller before um, cancelled our descent clearance a couple of times because there was traffic, and then we were just too high. So now we need to perform. Oh, we need to descend first and then come in again. And now I requested vectors. That means that the air traffic controller will give us heading instructions, and he will now navigate us around the mountains here. We of course also look left so and right. And for the speed, I go back to 160 now, or 70 even. Therefore, you get a nice tour around Salzburg. So this is the city center of Salzburg, and this is the airport of Salzburg. Ah, you're right. I should deactivate the passenger services. That's what we do now. No more drinks. Satisfaction is still 100%. The passengers won't realize that we do a little detour here. Austrian 7, Mike Whiskey, left heading 340. Left heading 340, Austrian 7, Mike Whiskey. Okay, we will stay on 170 for now for the speed and once we are again established with the ILS um, we will extend the landing gear and then also the flaps to full and reduce our speed to our final approach speed which is 134 knots indicated airspeed. Everything else is set up properly and we can now also arm the ground spoilers again. Oh, look at this. Left setting 250, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Left setting 
beautiful. There is Salzburg again. Here we see the runway lights, the airport beacon, and this is the city center of Salzburg. Left heading 180, cleared ILS 15. Left heading 180, cleared ILS 15, Austrian 7 Mark Whiskey. Good, the tower frequency is 118.1. So let me already dial that in 118.1. Okay, so now it looks better. We are aligned with the runway. There is one aircraft just departing. Austrian Tower, 1181, Servus. 1181, vielen Dank, Servus. Okay. Now let's reduce to our final approach speed, which is 134. Gear down. And speed check flaps three. Music off. Speed check flaps full. And cabin crew seats for landing. And the data echo ever got Juliet, the QNH is 1035 and Squawk is 0003. No worries, guys. Tower, hello, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, fully established, ILS 15. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, Tower, Austrian 7 Mike Roger, we have the traffic inside Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. There is the traffic that just departed. Early left hand turn, please. Early left hand turn, please. Okay, I hope all of your bets are in. We are fully configured for landing. Landing checklist. Auto thrust speed, auto brakes are set to medium, Ica memo, landing, no blue. Landing checklist is complete. And we are waiting for the clearance. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, just to confirm, uh, we don't have the landing clearance yet. Clear to land, 1115, Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Okay, autopilot off. And auto thrust off. Austrian uh, 556, uh, not a radio checklist. Austrian 556, radio 556. Perfect. Um, requesting I for clearance to double that file for Austrian 556, we have information key on board. Minimum. Continue. Too low. And it's laggy. Don't know what's wrong here, but it's really laggy. 50, 40, 
Little bounce. Spoilers. Reverse green. D cell. Eighty, seventy, reverse stout, sixty, manual braking. Welcome to Salzburg. So we will the cat uh, next to the left, uh, to the right. That's Echo. Thank you very much, guys. Next to the right. Austrian 7 mic whiskey is vacated via Echo. Oh! There is one aircraft here. <laughs> What's going on here? Ah, they are departing in the opposite direction here at the moment. That's why this aircraft wanted to taxi to this holding point here. But probably took one too early, or I took one too early. Apologies for that. The flight plan should now be to Dublin, so we'll crash five or ten to Dublin five after five five six. I still have you in for for Manchester so if you could reconnect that might fix the issue. Yeah, I'll uh, disconnect and reconnect and I'll try again. Sorry about this, I'll see you in five months, please. Okay, transponder to standby. Weather radar off, predictive wind shear system warning off. Austrian sub mic whiskey, we are vacated and request taxi to the gate. Austrian taxi via Lima, stand of choice. Taxi via Lima to stand of choice, Austrian sub Okay. Uh, I've seen five, five, six. Um, we've so, after landing uh, items, is, has it changed, uh, flaps up and we can retract the spoilers. And the next we have to turn uh, to the left. Five, five, six, copy. Let's start the APU. Landing lights off. And taxi lights on. Strobe off. Uh, Where is our ground crew? Alpha departure, um, kilo, Over there. Feet. The very end. Let's go. Look at this beautiful DC-3 here. Austrian Airlines. Beautiful. Isn't it? There's one more Austrian Airlines A320 here. Oh, and this is the taxiway, not this line here. So this is our gate here, Whiskey 2, yes, there is the marshaller, taxi lights off, and when my turn off lights off, there he is, Good. We are in position. Parking brake set and before we do anything else, let me disconnect from the network and let's check the replay together. And first I will also complete the flight here. Complete, yes. Have not seen the landing yet, but I think it was, was okay-ish. 
It's not the softest landing because we bounced once. So... I think the first touch bound was very smooth, but then we lifted up and then dropped a little heavier or a little stronger. So let's disconnect from the network and let's check the replay together. And as always, we bring the aircraft into the right configuration for landing again. Switch on all the lights again, just like we had it for the landing. And passenger satisfaction 98%. That's a new record. New record. Congratulations uh, to all of us. You did a great service. So let me stop the queue now for the replay. Congratulations to all of you. Very good job, guys. And now let's check the replay together. from here where is it uh, uh, a little further that's good here looks fine. Oh, I just want to move the window here. Somewhere here. Yeah. Let's watch it from here first. That was a beautiful approach, as mentioned, so we will see it probably. Uh, we touched down and then slightly lifted off again. And the first touchdown was probably very soft, but then after we, we bounced or we lifted up again, and then we bounced and dropped a little stronger. That's at least my feeling. And I think the landing was okay-ish. But in the end, the second bound was bounced. I, I don't know if it was a better landing. We will see later. But it felt a little stronger. Beautiful, isn't it? Let me move the replay thing here to the bot bottom of the screen. Hold on, pause. Where can I move this thing? Oh, like so. Put it here. Roby, welcome back. Just seeing it now. There is Salzburg in the background. Yeah, the first touchdown was really very buttery and then, uh, I don't know, here it looks very soft. And this is the, I think it's called Hangar 7 of Red Bull. This is where they have uh, part of their, they have also an aircraft fleet, they operate historic aircrafts and they are parked here. I think it's called Hangar 7 or 40, uh, Hangar 7, not 100% sure. So... That looks actually ve looked very buttery, but it felt a little more strong. So let's play it again from here. And this time, let's 
portrait from the passenger's view with Salzburg in the background. It's so cool, all of these 3D buildi three buildings here. All of these buildings are really 3D scans of the real buildings there. That was the initial touchdown and then a little stronger drop. There is the Red Bull hangar again. Beautiful. So, from behind the runway. Let's watch it from behind the runway. Oh, let me first of all detach the drone here. Drone showcase. And then drone follow mode off. And we want a very high drone speed here so that we can fly towards the end of the runway. I think this is the soccer stadium here in Innsbruck. Let's take a brief detour. Yeah, this is the soccer stadium. There you go. And this is the city center. And look, uh, in no, not Innsbruck, Salzburg, of course. This is the Salzburg. And Salzburg actually means uh, salt um, fortress. Look at this. Beautiful, isn't it? This is the city center of Salzburg. It's a really very, very nice city. I can only recommend to go there. It's beautiful, really. And look at this. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I love this game, really. Look at this. Beautiful, isn't it? <sighs> So beautiful. Look at this. This is the old town of Salzburg. And this is the castle. So yeah, Salzburg literally, Salz means salt and Burg means fortress. It's such a nice game, really unbelievable. Okay, let's check it from here. So maybe let me briefly decrease the speed of the drone again. Where is the center line? This is the center line here. Now let's go to the 1000 foot marker. Let's see here. Beautiful view. Very, very beautiful view. So terminus on the right. This is the Red Bull hangar again, the runway and look at this beautiful view. Good, let's unpause, let's watch it from here and let me switch off the drone focus, put it to off. Good, the aircraft should arrive soon. Let's turn around. There it is, approaching. Let's put it here. And pause and let's turn around. Oh. Ah! Let me first pause again until I manage to get back to the center line. Bone speed is too high. Like so. the first touchdown only with the left gear and then a little harder drop uh, let's do that once again let's try that one more time 
with a little more zoom even. Let me go further to the back here. There is the aircraft. Now you see only the left landing gear slightly. That was a gentle touchdown and now the little bit harder drop. Nice. Nice, nice. What you had. <laughs> okay, so I would say um, let's go back to the exterior view. And let's bring the aircraft back to our parking position. Oh. Exit replay, that's what I want. I hope we didn't lose it now, but anyways, we I have to go back to the main menu. No, there it is. So this replay tool is really nice, it's just doing its job, so I really like it. Once again, it's called FS Playground, and for me it works really well. You see, everything is back where it was before. Um, it's really nice. So we are back just before su before the sun is setting between between these two mountains here. And what we are going to do now is let's let's just briefly shut down the aircraft very quickly and parking brake is set, APU should be running, APU bleed is on. So engine 2 off, engine 1 off. All the lights we have to switch off again after the replay. Continue. Lights off, strobe lights off, beacon lights off, wing lights off, fast seatbelt signs off. And let me restart the passenger tool here now. We had 98%. Yes. So let me connect the stairs. Ground power unit. Fast and seatbelt signs are off. I think I will have to restart the ground handling tool here I'm using. And then we prepare the aircraft for the second leg. And I'm going to check your miles, of course, first, and the landing rate game. Good. Uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, the, the ground guys are not reacting here. They are here, but they just don't want to unload our aircraft. So we stop the flight manually now. We were not delayed, we were perfectly on time, but the ground crew just didn't want to, just don't want to dis, uh, to deboard the aircraft and the passengers. So no stairs here, I don't know why it's not reacting here on the scenery. Um, but nevertheless, what we do now is we had 98% passenger satisfaction, we take that, new record. And now we stop it, the tool, yes, and we check the landing rate. And then we prepare the aircraft for the second leg to Zurich. So, landing rate, uh, okay, didn't thought it was that, that firm. Few details, so let me show you the full landing report. Here we are, so. Yeah, we touched down more or less exactly at the 1000 foot marker with minus 250 feet per minute. So the initial touchdown was exactly on the 1000 foot marker, but then the second one, the slightly stronger drop, was slightly behind. It says with minus 250 feet per minute. Well, I would have thought something like 180 or so, to be honest. So it was not the most buttery landing we ever had, but also, I mean, this is not a strong hard landing, rather a normal landing. I would have thought it would have been a little more smooth 
But um, yeah, as always, we trust the tool. So it says minus 250 feet per minute. Pitch was five degrees, speed 131. So let me see who was the closest. Roby said minus 78. Um, Adam said minus 65. Marcel said minus 82. Hail driver said minus 85. William said minus 90 only this time. Uh, Paul said minus 56 and Manuel said minus 60. Guys, you were all very confident. So I think the highest value was 90. 90, do I see anything higher? No, 90. So um, that means 90 with 90, William was the closest, even though he usually says minus 190, he said 90 this time. And William, you are still the closest one with 90 tonight. So 20 miles will go to your account just now. William, let me put 20 miles to your accounts. William, you had 7,164 miles now. You will have 1, uh, 7,184 miles. And by the way, William, you just broke through the 2,000 miles. Uh, 7,000 miles, of course, William. First one to achieve 7,000 miles. Congratulations once again. Highest in the miles ranking so far. 7,160. 64 miles now on your account. Uh, 1, 7,184 mi miles now with the 20 miles you just got. So, let's do the turnarounds. Let's go very quickly to the main menu to just reload the aircraft. And then we prepare the flight to Zurich. So, Salzburg. Where is it? Start. It should be here. Linz. Hmm. So then we need to find it like this. There is. Set as departure. And we select the runway. Salzburg. Ima Oscar Whiskey Sierra. And we want two whiskey. So now we do the brief turnaround together as fast as we can. We don't want to lose too much time. So we create a new flight plan from Lima Oski, Oscar Whiskey Sierra, which is Salzburg, to Lima Sierra Zulu Hotel, which is Zurich. We take the same aircraft, our seven mic whiskey, and the latest miles account was 7,184 7, miles. We will depart in 20 minutes. So let's hurry. We will take, let's set that and see if it's working this time, 165 passengers, two tons of cargo. And I want to take some extra fuel here, reserve fuel for 60 minutes. Contingency, we take 20% and let's see if that is working this time. Okay, create the flight plan. It's loading and here we have the flight. It's a very short flight, only 40 minutes. We pre-file it as well. And I press fly now. And this is our briefing, which we will go through later. We are already back in Salzburg on ground. 
So this is really going to be a very short flight. Just fire the flight plan in the background on the VETSIM network. Okay. Flight plan is filed. Our cruising level will only be flight level 260, which is nice so close over the Alps. And sun will be setting soon. So we go back and let's, as always, first of all, connect the ground power unit. Let's see if it's working this time. Yes. Where is it? There it is. Good. Same first officer again. Hello, hello. So batteries on. 25.4%. Very nice. ADRS alignment. And APU test. APU fire test is completed. Let's also do engine 2 and engine 1. All working. Let's start the APU. APU bleed on. Now flight controls are on. Evacuation sign and so on. We do not test this time. With crew ox oxygen supply on. Navigation lights on. Fuel pumps on. Even though we will still do the fueling in a second. Emergency exit lights to arm. And the navigation light is on already. Fasten seatbelt signs on. We need some lights here. Same for our displays again, as always. And we reconnect to the network. Okay. So, it's done for our first officer. Okay. And the FCU screen. Okay. Like so. Q and H was 1035. Light director on. Constraint page. Same for our first officer. She doesn't do it on her own. And let's load the flight plan request. And we see flight plan is loaded. Austrian 7184 from Salzburg to Zurich. Cost index, according to our briefing, is 5. And that's okay. Now we need the weights. So that's our briefing. We don't go through everything again in detail, but cost index is 5. Cruising level is 260. And now the payload. 1.7 tons for our flight, only not even 30 minutes. Contingency 20. This was taken over correctly, 341 kilos. Alternate would be Frankfurt. The, the flight time to Frankfurt would even be longer than the flight time to Zurich. Uh, final reserve is one hour. That has been increased now because of yeah, the extra fuel we loaded. So this time it has been taken over correctly. And that brings us to a block fuel of roughly 6.6 .6 tons. Um, yeah, we can of course sign the briefing document here we will depart via the Traun 8 Victor departure out of runway 33 um, and into Zurich it will be Negra 1 Alpha runway 34 according to our dispatcher, dispatcher at least passenger and cargo has not been the cargo has not been taken over correctly but the passengers have so I think for the cargo next time I have to type in not 2.0 but 2000 kilos Yes, that was my mistake probably. So payload is only 17.4, zero fuel weight only 61.2, fuel 6.6, .6, takeoff weight 67.7. So this we hammer into our FMS, MCDU menu, add to page, and then AOC menu, performance weight and balance, block fuel we wanted to have 6.6 .6. yes this is correct so let's press load and send next page zero fuel weight should have been a little higher so once again we need to add 2.8 this time so 19 20 point point two 
So 20,200. 20,200, yeah, 61.2, that's correct. Load and send. Back to the initialize page. So departure, runway. Let's see if Innsbruck is still online. Yes, it says runway 33 for departures. So they are using the runway in both directions at the moment because they are the Alps in the opposite direction. So our standard instrument departure should be the Trau 7 Sierra then probably or 2 Alpha. We will see that in a second once we contact air traffic control. Insert. And for Zurich, at least to our dispatcher, it would be ILS 3-4. And the Negra, one alpha. Insert. Okay, now let's go back to the initialize page. Zero fuel weight is 61.2. Center of gravity is 30 again. And the block fuel is 6.6 .6 tons. Okay. Takes a second. Good. Now, performance page. So, let's reset this. Innsbruck. Meter. No wind. That's correct. QNH now 1036. Flaps 1. Packs we will switch to. Uh, we will let on. Anti ice is off. Runway is dry. Takeoff weight is lower now, 67.7. And the rest remains the same. Runway will be 33. And flex temperature 53, V1 147, VR 147, and V2 148. So V1 speed is the same than our rotation speed, which is good. That means we can abort the takeoff until the point where we would anyways uh, rotate and lift up the nose. Transition altitude is 110. And flex temperature 53, not 54. Flaps 1 and trimming is again down 0 0.3. Okay, that's all set up. Next phase, selected speed mode for the climb out, 230. And now we are more or less good to go. Okay, let's contact Innsbruck Tower now. Again, frequency 8.1 and let me update the route and the overlay as well now so first the overlay so that you have the current information also on the overlay we are now flying from Innsbruck to Zurich yes overlay is now updated and the route well in a second so the route command is now updated very good. So let's contact Innsbruck Tower now. Innsbruck Tower, hello again. Uh, sorry, Salzburg Tower, hello again. Austrian 7 mic whiskey stand whiskey 2. Request IFR clearance to Zurich. Initial 
Clear to Zürich via the Traun 3 Bravo um, out of Runway 33. Squawk is 4654 and initial climb is 8000 Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey. Austrian 7 Mike Whiskey, head back high. Okay. So initial climb 8000 feet. We are cleared via the Traun 3 Bravo. And I'm not sure if we have that. Runway 33. Traun to Alpha or 7 Sierra we have. <laughs> let's take let's take the to Alpha now and I check it on the maps here. So for runway 33. Which departures do we have? For runway 33, we really only have two Alpha or seven Sierra. Oh uh, no, there's also the three Bravo here out of runway 15, I think. Uh, Salzburg Tower, just to confirm, uh, are we cleared via runway 33 or runway 15? Because Traun 3 Bravo is for runway 15, right? Yeah, runway 15, Traun 3 Bravo. Roger, runway 15, France 3 Bravo, Austrian 7 Mac Whiskey. Okay, that was why my mistake, probably. Um, we were not cleared for runway 33, as our dispatcher told us once again. <laughs> our dispatchers always give us wrong instructions, but runway 15, and then we also have the Crown 3 Bravo. Insert, so that's correct. Now we need to confirm the takeoff speeds again. No, no, no. One, four, seven. And one, four, eight. Yes. Okay, that's all set up. Well, nine, two, four, request start. Good. So, our standard instrument well, departure now looks like this. We will be departing in southern direction. Just a second. And then turn left immediately to avoid the mountains here and then so fly back right to Traun here. And at Traun we should be at 7,000 feet. So and that's our standard instrument departure. Any failure before we won, we stop on the runway, evacuate if necessary. Any failure but after we won, we will depart. And there are mountains here, so we will have to fly the left turn. And that's going to be challenging. So our um, safe climb, climb speed V2 is 148, so that means we try to keep the aircraft at 148 knots and perform a very steep left turn here. Um, probably won't be able to climb a lot. Minimum safe altitude is 11,000 here because here are high mountains. But behind us it's 7,800, so also very high. Um, yeah, Here in this area it's, it's lower, so it's something like probably four or 5,000 here. But yeah, we will have to perform a left steep, steep left turn because there is high terrain here and then just climb as, as fast as possible. Good. So, we are set up. Let me finish the passenger loading. No. So we start the flight and ready for boarding. Stop the boarding process already. But the problem is here, here are really no stairs. So at this airport you cannot operate stairs. And that's a problem because <laughs> <laughs> Without stairs, the passengers cannot board. I have another tool which at least lets you open the doors. Let's see if it's working then. It's a bit unrealistic, but better than flying without passengers. So there is one tool called aircraft doors or something. Let me see if it's working with that. So we want the main door. Yeah, I can open the door and then I can start and complete the boarding process immediately. Yeah, all passengers on board. So let me close the door again. Without stairs, they just jumped in. Okay. So, 
APU is running. Okay, Let's we'll disconnect the ground power unit. Lights on, beacon lights on. Oh. Mm, there are some aircraft that just arrived. Suspect Tower, good evening, Ryan 710 Golf, I'm Suspect on the ILS That looks so good. Now, before start checklist. Here we go. Before start checklist, cockpit preparation is completed. Gear pins and covers are removed. Signs, did we switch them to on already? Yes, signs are on. ADR is set to now fuel quantity, 6.6 .6 tons. Takeoff data is set, by reference is set to 1036 on both sides now. Checked and before start checklist below the line, windows and doors are closed, beacon light is on. Thrust levers are set to idle and the parking brake is set. Before start checklist is complete. Let's contact Ground to request item and pushback clearance. Salzburg Ground, Austrian, Southern Mike Whiskey, request startup and pushback. Austrian, Southern Mike Whiskey, push, start approved, facing north. Push and start approved, facing north, Austrian, Southern Mike Whiskey. Rainer 7 Tango Alpha win, did I go to land? Cold sand, Rainer 7 Tango Alpha. That was the. Uh, the pushback tool I'm using. So let me change the voice to Austrian. If I remember, they had Austrian. No, they have German. German. So English with a German accent. They have very good. So let's take this one out. Yeah. Okay. Flight deck to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger. Release the parking brakes. Parking brake is released. Pushing back. No! Uh, guys, the simulator crashed. Oh no, man! You know what we do then? Then let's finish the day with some landing challenges without the flight to Zurich. <sighs> there are anyways new landing challenges, but it's the first time since very, very long I have a crash in the simulator. That's not good. Just when the pushback should have started. Ah, yes, exactly. Screaming passengers. Ah, yeah, I'm just restarting the simulator in the background, but then we do some landing challenges. Let's do one or two landing challenges and then, then we call it a day tonight. If the simulator restarts again. Is it loading or not? Yes, there it is. Ah. Damn it! That's a shame, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the technique. Sometimes it lets you down. 
at least the stream seems to be working better since the last two or three streams. We had no crash of the stream. There was an update of the streaming tool I'm using, Streamlabs OBS. And since then, I did not have a crash. So I hope um, they fixed it. But yeah, and it's the first time I'm having a crash uh, with Microsoft Let's Minute 2020 since, since a very long time. <laughs> Thanks Manhattan William for donating $5. Tafel Spitz for lunch and fondue for dinner. I was writing this when the simulator crashed. Let's do some nice landing challenges. How about solar tape? Good idea. So two requests. Uh, Manuel wanted to see the Mount Everest. Let's do that. And then we go for two landing challenges if you want to. So both Seoul and Taipei. Um, as far as I know, there is no real 3D photogrammetry for Seoul or Taipei at the moment. But I mean, the, um, the scenery should be nice anyway. So I mean, no 3D buildings but the ones with, uh, that, that are created with artificial intelligence. So there are 3D buildings, but just not the real ones. Um, but there should be real satellite pictures. So let's just see how it is. Let's do two landing challenges there. And let's check the Mount Everest as well. So... And there should be new landing challenges because, yeah, as you see, new scenery was just introduced with the latest update. The UK got enhanced and there are some landing challenges in the UK as well. So maybe we can do one landing challenge in the UK and then um, one in Seoul and one in Taipei airport. Never did that. And we can also take different aircrafts and then we check the Mount Everest. So let me first of all see what is the closest. The closest airport to the Mount Everest is probably Lukla. We can do a landing challenge in Lukla. So let's see, closest, closest airport to Mount Everest. It's probably Lukla. Yeah, it's Lukla. Uh, and there are landing challenges for Lukla. So let's do the following. Let's start with that, with a landing challenge into Lukla. Because there are actually nice ones. And I don't think we ever did that. And it's pretty challenging. So... Is it famous? Nice, Jackson, Jackson, New York, Rio. Where is Lukla? Not here. So Epic, Paro, Saba, no. Strong wind. Nah, there used to be a landing challenge for Lukla. 100% certain. Innsbruck, Queenstown. Okay, let me find it once again. Nice, Quito. Rio, Sydney, Toronto. Ah, there it is, Lukla. So let's start with that. The problem is, I mean, we can check where Mount Everest is. Um, the problem is probably it won't look so high because also all the other mountains surrounding Mount Everest are so very high. So I don't think that's gonna be so very striking to see Mount Everest in between of all the other mountains here. So let me do the following. Let me switch off the overlay there. Because that's not gonna be correct. So, oh, so yeah, we are in the middle of um, in the middle of Nepal somewhere, and this is the area around Mount Everest. Now I don't know where Mount Everest is exactly. This we would have to find out. But let's do the landing challenge first, maybe into Lukla. Lukla should be somewhere here to the right.
and Mount Everest, you see how far it's going up here. Or probably it's one of these mountains here. After we did the landing challenge, I will spawn us here again and remove the clouds. And then we would just yeah, beam ourselves up. There is the airport of Lugla. It's just here, this strip. And then we might be able to see it a little better. Landing raid, yeah. Do the landing raid game, please, guys. So, landing raid bets are open again. I anyways have to do uh, 360 here because we are still too high. And we will have to take care of the high terrain here. A lot of mountains left and right. Look at this. And see, our w windshield is freezing. See this? Nice. We are so high. Oh. I hope we have anti ice on. But no time to check it now. <laughs> Flaps full. Now let's see, where is the runway? There it is. Windshield is frozen. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm honest. I did an approach into Lugla once, but it's long time ago. So let's see how we do. Runway is just ahead of us. We will have to fly pretty close to stall speed because it's a very very short strip. There it is, just ahead of us. Oh, and it's gusty here. Oh, that's maybe too close to stall speed. Okay, what's going on? Ah, that was this bug. Uh oh, guys, we will crash. <laughs> we will crash. <laughs> you wanted to see a crash? This is a crash. Damn it! Let's try that again. The problem is, um, I read that, that with the latest update, with some aircrafts, um, so not with the fly-by-wire mod, but with other aircrafts, if you go to flaps full, then there is so much drag that you cannot, um, that the engine is not strong enough to... <laughs> to outbalance that drag so that's that's a bug a known bug but once you go to flaps full it will just look at the speed now if i go to flaps full yeah exactly look at the airspeed now it's 111 if i go to flaps full you will see it's dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and you can't really do much even if you go to thrust to full thrust see not increasing airspeed even with full thrust so Let's go back to flaps one then. And then we have to land with a higher speed. And let's hope it's better now. So one more try. I mean, also we are very high here. It's Nepal. Um, so even though it doesn't look like we are high, but the entire the entire area here is very high. So we are at 10,000 feet and for a turboprop aircraft that's already pretty high. But I mean, that was not the problem. The problem was the drag of the flaps. So let's try it again. Runway is ahead of us.
think we would all like to see damage models in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, but it's something they never did and they probably never will. They want to prevent people from, crash, from crashing aircrafts into buildings and so on. So you will probably never really see a good damage model in, in any flight simulator. Slightly before the touchdown zone, and now full brakes. And we are in Lukla. Welcome. So, landing rate was <laughs> 328 feet per minute. 328. Nature's Child minus 333. You are the closest. So, Nature's Child, 20 miles will go to your account just now. Nature's Child. So Nature's Child, you had uh, 1,123 miles. You will now have 1,143 miles. Congrats. Now, you see <laughs> only that was my first landing here in Lukla, so the first landing challenge I ever did. And only 18,000th position with that landing. Yeah, we touched down too early and also it was not the most buttery landing, but okay for Lukla. So the question is if we could now see the replay, probably not. No. But then let's do the following now. Let's restart. Uh, ah, no, then I can change the weather. Damn it. Uh, we just have to go to Lukla manually. And then I beam ourselves up into the air. Yeah, because here I can change the weather. So let's do the following. Let's go to Lukla. Yes. <laughs> Nature's child. Always also, also also very good in, in the landing rate games. Just like Adam as well. So Lukla. And what aircraft? Let's take. Let's take the extra aircraft. No, we need an aircraft that flies high. So. And let's take. Let's take the Cessna Citation Longitude. And. Yeah, let's just spawn there first. Yeah, we can take off from Lukla. We can try. Now I took the Learjet or the Cessna Citation. That couldn't take off from Lukla, but we can try anyways. Did you say we're going to crash, Nature's Child? <laughs> brace, brace, brace. No. So we can try to take off from here. Let's see if that works. Then let me do the following. Um, flaps. Let's even go with a higher flap setting here. This is the Cessna Citation Longitude. This flight deck looks really neat, doesn't it? This really looks like a private jet. Leather seats. This looks like a luxury car. And let's try to take off with the... It's a nice, very, very nice Learjet. Let's try to take off from here. The runway is down sloped, so let's let's try if it works. Could be working. So I will slam on the brakes and full thrust and then release the brakes. And let's see. Ah, that could could be sufficient. 60. <laughs> we need something like 120. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's gonna be close. <laughs> stall, stall. This is like ski jumping rather than flying. <laughs> the runway is not really made for this. So this is live weather at the moment here in Nukla. This is live weather, but now let's change it. We wanted to see clear skies to be able to see the Mount Everest. 
Now let's beam ourselves up and let's look for the highest mountain here. Further up, all the way up. Like so maybe. And now let's see, where is the highest mountain? Uh, look at this, this looks really nice. Again, the photogrammetry and the satellite pictures are really, really amazing. And I think it's then probably one of these three mountains here. Ah, it's probably this one here. Can we switch on the point of interest? Will we see it then? No. No pin here. But it must be this one here, I guess. This is also not far than from Lukla, but yeah, you see, I mean, we are flying now with whatever, 600, 800, 600 to 800 kilometers per hour. If you have to walk and Lukla was somewhere here in the first valley, so you first of all have to cross these mountains to get to the highest here. That's actually quite a challenge in this these altitudes with so few oxygen. Let's be more ourselves there. Yeah, these, this is probably where the, all the base camps are. They, I, I'm not so much into really high mountain hiking, so I don't know all the details, but I know they have base camps somewhere. And probably from Lukla, which was somewhere here in the valley, um, you will first of all have to hike up and go to one of these base camps here. And from there you start going up further. But this is Mount Everest here. Must be this one. That's at least the highest one here in the area. So let's do one little tour around Mount Everest. Heading one. Yeah, I can check it here on the map. Let me check that. Just a second. Good idea. Can check it on my EFB. the aircraft now so it's somewhere here so let me check on the map I like this aircraft. I think it looks it looks nice. Also the interior, the flat deck looks nice. So where are we now? Are we still connected to the sim? Oh, that's a problem. I have to connect first. But also here, the, the scenery is really amazing. All of that is real satellite pictures. That's so nice, really. Really amazing. Okay, now I'm connected again here on my EFB. Now let me zoom out just to verify if this was really Mount Everest. Yes, that's it. <laughs> I 
Yeah, so we saw Mount Everest. <laughs> and as mentioned, I mean, it looks nice, but um, it's not like it's this one mountain that strikes out of all of the other mountains here because the entire area here is so high. Mm. Also in the background, I mean, there are also other high mountains that doesn't look much lower. So yeah, it's, it's rather the entire area here is so high. I know it's impressive, definitely it's impressive, but the Alps are also equally impressive from my point of view, because also there you have a lot of mountains that from a mountain point of view are probably the same, same height, more or less. It's just that here also the base where the mountain starts is already on 10,000 feet or so. But nevertheless, interesting to see it from the air. I once flew over this area in, in real life, so, but I mean, of course, if you watch out of the window, it's really hard to spot which one is, um, is the Mount Everest. Yeah, nice. Very, very nice. And yeah, it's a game. It's a computer game that costs 100 euros and you can fly around the entire world and check out beautiful places like this in 3D photogrammetry with real satellite pictures and look at all these glaciers here and lakes and all of that is like real. That's really, really, really nice. Good. So I would say we did this. <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> Let's do... Um, Let's do the landing challenge in Taipei, Taipei next. Landing challenge in Taipei. So for this, let's try the... What about the 747 again? We haven't been flying the 747 here for a long time now. So I don't know if it got better, probably not. Um, but let's try the 747. What liveries do I have? Boeing Air Force One Cargo Lux. Let's go with the Cargo Lux one. And then let's start with Taipei. Oh, Taipei. Arrival. So here there is no landing challenge here, but we set up our own. And I have the electronic flight back here loaded, so yeah, it should take over the right data. Set that as arrival. We want real weather, live weather, yes. And what time of the day? Let's go for evening. Fly. Um, not in this simulator, William. In this simulator, really, I mean, the only aircraft that really works for now is the Airbus A320. Unfortunately, the CRJ900 is coming very soon. That's going to be interesting. So I will definitely buy that one. Um, and besides that, there are a lot of add-ons in, in development at the moment. So there is at least an enhancement to the Dreamliner, which would be nice, planned. There is a 747 plant. There is the MD-11 plant, William, as well. So there are a lot of aircrafts in the making, but I, I guess my assumption is that will still take a couple of months until the CRJ is going to be released very, very soon, a couple of weeks. But the other aircrafts, my assumption, and the A380, the Airbus A380 is also, why did, did I select departure? Oh, then we do the following. do it like this and um, there is an Airbus A380 plant so that's something also by flight for from the fly-by-wire crew who also did the A320 and I'm really looking forward to this because my assumption is that they will do again a great job just like with the A320 and it's free of charge again crazy what these guys are delivering so um, yeah really looking forward to that as well A380 would be nice really really nice and yeah, there are a lot of aircrafts coming, but most of them will probably take a couple of months. But 
as mentioned, next time I will fly, fly prepared again, the other simulator. So I'm trying to change every now and then between the two platforms. And there we have the A330, the Dash 8, A320, A321, 747, 777 and the Dreamliner and the CRJ. So I will take one of these aircrafts for a ride next time again. But now let's first do an approach into Taipei here. So uh, we are too fast anyways. Landing gear down, flaps full and auto brakes we set to two maybe and once again landing challenge is open guys uh, let, me, let me put the aircraft in the right position here the clicking noise you hear this is the overspeed warning in boeing aircrafts Okay, now I really try to butter it. Uh, this looks like so probably realistic seating position thanks manuel for donating six dollars oh four thank you for the tour around mount everest it's truly amazing manuel thank you very very much very much appreciated again um as mentioned all of our donations will be put in two activities first of all the trees we are planting and we have already planted more than 20 trees and of course into new scenery new aircraft so everything we need to en enhance the streams here. So yeah, you see here, this is all, um, this is all um, satellite pictures here as well in Taipei, but the buildings you see are built by artificial intelligence. So this is no 3D photogrammetry, but artificial intelligence buildings. Well, now let me focus on the landing. Ah, that's again this bug with the 747. It's so floaty. Um, I saw a, a real 747 pilot trying it out, and he was like, uh, uh, he was also mentioning that the 747 feels very unrealistic during landing here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. He said, with 747, if you touch down and the ground spoilers deploy, then basically there is there is no way to have it that floaty. So then it really drops down to the ground. And you also see that if you watch videos, if you see a 747 landing, and then if the ground spoilers come up, it's really pressed into the runway. And here it feels like it doesn't want to go down, but we can check it in the replay again. So let me show you the landing report first. And in the meantime, let me load the replay of this landing. Replay. Hope it recorded the replay. Ah, I think it didn't record the replay. Did it? Let me see. Ah, okay. Damn it, it didn't record the replay, but the landing report is there. So let me open that. So uh, I don't know if I have a landing report of that or yes, no, we have landing report is here. So it was minus 154 feet per minute. 
who was the closest? Minus 154. Manuel said minus 140. Roby said 130. I think. Manuel, you're the closest. Adam said minus 170. So, yeah. No, uh, Manuel, you were the closest. That means, Manuel, 20 additional miles will go to your account. Just one second. Manuel. Let's do two more landing challenges now. So, um, and then I stop the stream for today. And actually, I have to agree. So, I think for the next times, I would try to do, let's say, one leg, one interesting leg rather than two, unless there is a really nice air traffic event on going, uh, going on. Uh, one leg and then maybe a landing challenge afterwards. But landing challenges only really work here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So I'm prepared. Yeah, there is no, there are no real landing challenges. So I'm prepared. We rather concentrate on the real flight. And Manuel, you will now have 4,725 miles on your account. Congratulations. And let's do the, we had Taipei now. So let's do Seoul next. And afterwards, we do one more of the pre-programmed landing challenges here. And then we call it a day for tonight. So. And now let me restart the replay tool as well so that we can watch the replay. So first of all, Next, we wanted to see Seoul, and this time we take the Dreamliner. Seoul. Uh, no, it's Incheon. This one. Set as arrival. And the Dreamliner. Dreamliner. Which liveries do we have? Let's see. Uh, Air Canada, Aero Mexico. Do we have something that is more Asian? Ethiopian, Kalem, Lot, Norwegian, Qantas, Qatar, Singapore, Vietnam. Let's take the Vietnamese one. Good. Okay. Let's fly this landing challenge. <laughs> Beers on me. <laughs> ah, don't mention beer. Did somebody say beer? <laughs> it's too far away. It's in the refrigerator. I have to go there. <laughs> okay. So this one and then one more of the pre-programmed ones. An interesting one, a challenging one. This one is probably not challenging because it's an IFR approach into Incheon. Ah, once again, for whatever reason, it always, it doesn't take it if we select it as a rival, but then, or I did it wrong again. Let's do it like this. So there is the runway. Look at this beautiful. No, I just want to start the replay tool. Yes. Beautiful, isn't it? Get down. Flaps full. Ah, let's see what's happen what happens here in the Dreamliner if we set it if we set flaps full. Also here the drag is very high, just like in the Cessna Caravan, but beautiful livery. The model is really, really nice, really amazing. It's, it's such a shame that they didn't manage. Look at it. It's probably the, the most beautiful Dreamliner model in any simulation at the moment, the exterior model, but it's such a shame that they didn't manage to introduce the, the, the right avionics and all the systems. So let's set auto brake to two. Let's arm the ground spoilers. Even that is not working properly here. Uh, anyways. Now let's butter and look at this. Look at this. 
We are flying with 111 knots. I mean, the aircraft would drop like a stone. It was, it would just stall. So I can't understand how they, how they could mess up the flight models and the avionics of these beautiful aircraft so much. Anyways, landing challenges are open again. Yes, landing challenges are open again. Rowie minus 145, William minus 190 as always, Manuel minus 150, Nature's Child minus 90, Adam minus 133. Let me first of all bring the aircraft back to the right um, glide slope here, or the back to the glide slope. A little too high, three whites and one red light at the moment. For next time, I need to find out how to how to increase the sound of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. It's at the moment it's at 100%, so the volume is on 100%. But maybe then I just need to reduce all the other um, applications in sound if this one is so so quiet, and then increase the overall level somehow. Look at this, we are approaching with 125 knots. Of course, if the aircraft is completely empty, completely empty and no fuel. I don't know, maybe something like 130, 129 is realistic. But we had 110 before, so there the aircraft would definitely stall. Okay, just stop the, the aircraft on the runway here. And let's check the replay. And let me already show you the landing rate. This time we do it a little easier. This is FS Playground, the tool I'm using for the replay. And it also shows you the, the landing rate here. 120 feet per minute, side slip 0%, uh, pitch was 5 degrees and bank 0.4. Um, so, yeah, very soft landing again, butter landing. Who was the closest? I think Adam was 133. Adam, Adam is the closest. So Adam, let me put 20 miles already on your account. Adam, Adam, 5,869, uh, 5, you will now have 5,889. Congrats. And now let me open the replay here. Replay. Oh yeah. Let me fast forward. Again. I really like this tool. So let's wait here until the landing gear is down. I mean, the model is really nice. Also, if we check it, ah, damn it, now I don't have the passenger views configured correctly here. Probably I can set it up here. Don't know you, was it here? Ah, 
Let's check that later. Let's first check it from the exterior. Such a nice aircraft, really. Especially in the stretched version. This is the 787-10, seven, 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 um, even though here on delivery it says dash 8, but this is the longest version of the Dreamliner here. was a butter landing, wasn't it? And what I wanted to show you is the passenger's view. I think that's here. The normal ones. Uh, ah, no. They are not even in anymore. No. So, yeah, can't show you the passenger view now. But anyways, that was the landing. I would say let's do one final landing challenge. <laughs> Just been lucky. Thanks, bud. Go play <laughs> Euro Millions today. <laughs> yeah, play that, please. And uh, we all want to participate. <laughs> Yes, they do have tire smoke. Um, let me see. Can we see that? More subtle than the one they have in prepared, definitely. But there is tire smoke. At least there used to be tire smoke. Watch it once again from here if we see it. Oh, no. But there, there definitely was tire smoke. I don't know, maybe if the landing is too soft or so, or with some models they don't have it. Also, anyways, the, the way the four wheels here touch down, or then tilt down, if you touch down with the first landing gear, looks slightly unrealistic. Because usually, if you touch down with the first row of the gear, so with the, yeah, with the rear row of the, of the four gears, of, of the four wheels here, then also immediately, more or less, it settles down completely, but it didn't. Good. So let's do one final landing challenge. And then we call it a day for tonight. So landing challenge. Let me see one of the one one of the new ones I want to do. But I'm not sure if I would have to download them first. So let's go to Epic. All of these we had already. So here are no new ones. Strong wind. Hmm. What was it here? Toronto, Sydney, no. So then let me do one thing. Let me try one thing very briefly. Um, that was here under profile and then content manager. I think here, maybe not. No, all of that is downloaded. So maybe there are no new landing challenges here for the UK. Then we need to go with one of the, of the old one. No marketplace there. There it is, I think. Marketplace and then full catalog and then scenery aircraft activities. Oh, airport, free content, promotion bundle, blah, blah, blah. Maybe not. Ah. No, no, I thought, I thought you could download the landing challenges here. No, you can't. So then let's do one of the ones that are already in here. And let me see, let me see. Shall we take a strong wind one? 
I think we never did Queenstown. It's not so difficult, but it's a strong wind one. What do you want? Queenstown or Bahamas? Queenstown or Bahamas, which landing challenge would you prefer? There are float planes, yes. Um, but um, no landing challenge for the float planes. planes. But we once did land a float plane in New York to check out uh, Manhattan Williams place. <laughs> so we basically flew from LaGuardia uh, straight Queenstown. Okay, so Manuel, you were the first one, so let's do Queenstown. We flew from LaGuardia, LaGuardia with the float plane uh, straight to Manhattan and then landed, not on the Hudson River, but the, the other one, um, close to the... Um, ah, I'm tired. Um... Not close to Fifth Avenue, but uh, what is this district called again? Uh, anyways, we landed close to Manhattan and then checked out Manhattan Williams Place. Uh, so that, that's when we when we flew a floaty plane once, or float plane once, water plane. So this is one of the windy landing challenges, and it actually really is gusty here. East River, thank you. And how is the district called again? How is the, it's such a beautiful district, but I forgot the name. How is the district called again there? No, not the Hudson, it was the East River where we landed on. The Hudson River is on the other side of Manhattan. You see how the aircraft is shaking? The runway is straight ahead of us. So landing East Village. Yes, exactly. East Village. I had something with gardens in my mind, but um, no, East Village. Yes. Landing challenge is open again. This is the final landing challenge for tonight. And the airport is straight ahead of us. East Village. Yes, exactly. That's a very, very beautiful place. Minus 444. <laughs> Nature's child is optimistic. Manuel minus 160. Paul minus 250. The runway should be somewhere there ahead of us. Let me zoom in. Where is it again? Yeah, there it is. Oh, we need to fly a little closer to the train here. Queenstown in New Zealand. William is always minus 190. Look how this aircraft is shaking here. Crazy. Unfortunately, here in these official challenges, let me try, but I don't think the replay tool is working here. Because usually after the landing, yeah, you get this results page and so on. So I don't know if the replay will be working here. No, we don't want to download the new version yet. But I just started the replay tool again just to check. Maybe it is working. It's also a beautiful approach here. Coming in via the, uh, over the sea and on the right side and ahead of us uh, are mountains. Look at this. Very nice. But yeah, you see how, you also see how windy it is on the, or based on the waves here, on the sea. Quite some waves. <laughs> this is really gusty.
<laughs> it was a hard landing. Ah, and my rudder is not on. Ah, that was a really hard landing. We just got slammed into the ground. Okay, that was a very, very bad landing. <laughs> uh, so, what was it? Minus 374. Adam said 320. Nature's child said minus 444. That was one of the worst landing we ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, Adam, you were the closest. Yes, you are the closest. So Adam, once again, 899 miles you have at the moment. So now you will have, uh, sorry, 5,899. Now you, you will have 5,919 miles. Congratulations again. And let's see if we can check the replay of that. I don't know if it's working. Probably, I don't know. Maybe it will crash. Because if I press next here, then it will bring us back to the main menu. So I don't think we can watch the replay here. Let me see what happens. If I press replay. No, it doesn't work. No. So, that's it. We finished the day with a very, very bad landing. <laughs> and uh, I hope you anyways like the stream. We wanted to be in Zurich by now, uh, but we do that again next time. Zurich, we anyways flew so often. Um, I think the first leg was really amazing. I liked the flight to, to Salzburg. First time we flew there and it was a beautiful scenery all along the way. Italy, nice weather, the Alps, and then also a nice scenic approach into Salzburg. We even checked out the castle, so what more do we want? Um, we had to request a 360 in, in Salzburg because we just came in too high. No way we could have dropped more in altitude, so yeah, we had to request vectoring by the air traffic controller. But it was a great flight and unfortunately the simulator crashed for our second leg. Therefore we did some landing challenges, which I hope were entertaining and I had a great evening. Hope you had a great evening too. And I would say, as always, I wish you a beautiful weekend. And see you all definitely next week. I don't know when exactly yet. I will check out the air traffic events. And yeah, see you around. Guys, wish you all a very, very nice evening. And see you all very soon. Bye-bye.